Today's episode is brought to you by Gray Block Pizza. Gray Block, get that hitter. Today's episode is also brought to you by The Creator. It is, it is a short film, and this is our small business ad. The Creator is a new short film out of Brisbane, Australia. It's about a young woman being tracked down by a mysterious man in the dense Australian forest. However, not all is what it seems. Uh, it's Black Mirror meets Wolf Creek in The Creator. You can watch it right now for free. No subscription BS, nothing to sign up. Click the Vimeo link in the description below and enjoy it. If you're on Facebook, you can find it by searching The Creator Short Film. The link will be on the page. If you're on Instagram, just search the filmmaker Darcy Wellborn at the real Darcy 93 and click the link in his bio. The creator, a new sci-fi short film out of Brisbane, Australia. Get that creator. Today's episode is brought to you by Ridge Wallet. Ridge Wallet have that special kind of walletry that go in your pocket, but in your front pocket. Remember when people used to carry stuff in their back pocket? I barely do, because that is way long ago, bucko. That's the past. I'm talking about now. I'm talking about the future. I'm talking about, whoa, what's next? Black Mirror. It is the Ridge Wallet. The Ridge Wallet is that front pocket carry. You know, when I have mine on me right now, and I'll even hit my... You hear that? That's that Ridge Walletry. And this thing will hold your cards. It'll hold your ID. It is concise, and it is easy to front pocket. And it takes care of things, and even lasers can't get through this. And it could stop a bullet, though I wouldn't try that. You can go to RidgeWallet.com slash Theo, T-H-E-O, and use code Theo at checkout for 10% off. That's RidgeWallet.com slash Theo for 10% off, or use code Theo at checkout for 10% off. RidgeWallet.com. Today's episode is a, a man who let me stay at his apartment one time for a long time in an extended period of time. And he is, um, he's one of a kind. He's a rare element. He's that 62nd element uh, from, you know, the, fuck, I don't know, bro. But here's what I'm saying is, this man is very special. You know him, and he's always on the go. You know him from his Skeptic Tank podcast and his Netflix special, Double Negative. He's coming up in, uh, he'll be in Columbus, he'll be in Cleveland uh, or Cincinnati, and he'll be in uh, Tempe and Phoenix. Give it up for my friend, Mr. Ari Shafir. I love making fun of Ivy League. <laughs> it's so great. How fun is it? Dude? He takes it too. He doesn't really care. Bro, that's the thing. But I don't. He does care, but like he doesn't really. He just gets really. Oh fuck that! But it's like he doesn't really care. So he, he doesn't that. really care. Yeah, it's like making racist jokes at Ian Edwards, because he'll always be like, "Oh man," yeah. but he'll never be like, "Fuck you." Yeah. Like, Dude, <laughs> you're like, that's the reaction I want, but I don't want you to write me off as a person. Yes. I just want that reaction right now. Dude, it's so funny you say Ian Edwards. If I have something that I feel like it could be racist, I check with Ian Edwards. Yeah. Yeah. And he'll be like, no, it is. Yeah. But I, I mean, whatever. But it's funny, too. Yeah. 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 He'll at least, yeah, he'll at least like. Give it a real thought. Yeah. He's like, a, yeah, I just feel like he's just, uh, he just is about comedy first. Yeah, exactly. Or he'll be like, racism's bad, but racist jokes aren't that bad. Yeah. Well, dude, here's what I'm saying, though. I'll say this, man. A little racism... Goes a long way? It's exciting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if you want to grow in a place where there's no, none at all... Yeah, pretty boring. Yeah. For, the food's going to be bad. And I said this on my podcast yesterday, actually. Good food, you have to have a little bit of racism in the air. Oh, why is that? Because I think, you know, you're just... It might be the last meal every time, you know. You never know, like. Uh, yeah. And I don't mean any <laughs> specific direction of racism, but you got to have some strife in the air, dude. A little bit of stress in the pot goes a long way in the gut. <laughs> I'm not sure I see the connection. How does it make? Well, it think about food? cities that have good food. Yeah, L.A. riots. Riots. Baltimore. Baltimore. New York, for sure. New York, yeah. Um, uh, Austin. You know what I heard about 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 in Houston, all the comics there, they say fuck Austin. Not all the comics, yeah. but they say fuck Austin because Austin they're not rebelling against anything. It's already mm -hmm. fixed. 
So right. you got nothing to, to to speak on. But in Houston, you're fucking in your audience. You got a bunch of rednecks sometimes. Yeah, you got to you're going at somebody. Right, you have somebody to go yeah, at. And Austin, like, yeah, we agree. So like, what's the joy? Right. Well, that's the thing. Sometimes it's like I think some places you get to a place where it's just things are comfortable and there's no, there's nothing left to do. So you have to go. And that's when the Huns come in and fucking murder everybody. Just march through the streets and everyone's like, no, please. Is that really what happens? <laughs> yeah, everyone's so nice and friendly. And then, you know, some warring group comes in and no one knows how to fight back. They can just beat you all with like a, you know, pretty much one of those blackjacks. That's what I feel like could happen in L.A. Eventually. Come, somebody come and run over everybody. Because everybody, it just gets so soft. Do you, I mean, I feel like I get softer out here, living out here. Remember that? There was a there was a song about to graduates, Boz Lerman. Remember that when he was like song to the graduates, Boz did, Lerman. Yeah, he did a bunch of the uh, Romeo and Juliet soundtrack, but he goes, uh, "Live in L.A. but leave before you get soft, mm. or live in the West Coast, believe before, you get soft, and then live on the East Coast, but leave before you get too hard." Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that, man. I feel like it's like, you know, you start getting afraid of things that are okay, like They're regular fine. milk. Yeah. Regular milk. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh no. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Almond only, please. Yeah. It starts. Yeah. You just start to get a little. Yeah, but too much. Like, I understand. All right, get some almond milk. It's fine. But when somebody's like, oh, we just put half and half in there. Don't be like, no, yeah. no. Just be like, all right, dude, rock and relax. <laughs> Overall, eat the almond milk. If you get a non-GM, you know, if you get a GMO thing, whatever, who cares? It's one fucking thing. Yeah. You can eat a fucking chicken nugget once in a while, <laughs> brother. Know. Yeah, people think if they eat a Mac nugget that it's against gays out here, mm -hmm. you know? Dude, I'll have four or five McNuggets and not even thinking about a man. I'll, I'll go get some McNuggets. And then go to an anti-gay protest. Yeah, oh, wow. It doesn't yeah. stop me. Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Just for the camaraderie, you yeah. know. It's not even what I believe. It's just like cool dudes hanging out, having fun. Dude, sometimes I've, I wor I wonder if do you ever feel like a lot of gay men, gay men get seem to me also to be very judgmental a lot of times here, and maybe I just see that in Los Angeles, and maybe it's something that just I feel, but I feel like. It's not. I feel like gay men don't really support men that much. Really, they support other gay men. It seems like, but well, I don't know if they you ever, support. You ever do men. a show on like on like one of the gay bars in Santa Monica Boulevard? Yeah. Um, I mean, listen, most gay men are fine, but the queens mm -hmm. are the worst audience. Cause like, shut up, you don't know. Yeah. They listen to half your setups and like, wait, what? And you're like, you didn't even pay attention to any of this. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. They just sometimes come in to raise hell, and they sometimes they act like the crosswalk is a model area for modeling. <laughs> you know that, that that lady who dances? No, yeah, yeah. Well, I'll see a guy. He fucking just he's not doing anything <laughs> but crossing the street all night, and you know, just flat, you know, bragging about how he's in Fendi boots and John Elliott pants. You well, know? the thing is, dudes are so shallow, and then when you get only dudes and move move women away, that's why. The gay dudes are all jacked and worked out. Not the bears, you know, but a lot of them are way more jacked because yeah. they're like, I'm shallow. I have my pick of who, which dick I want to fuck. So let me improve myself, you know, get pecs yeah. so I can get my dick sucked. You know, men, we don't have to do that in order to get our dick sucked. Women are like, what are you into? What books have you read? Yeah. Gay dude's like, I don't give a shit. Yeah. Let me rub down that oil on you. <laughs> you know? Cool I'm, my only pickup line is, hey, I, you want to split a can of coconut water? You well, know? That's, that's all I usually have at the house. My friend Jarrett did this thing where he would like be with a guy. Mm -hmm. He's gay. And uh, and uh, he he would say, hey, it's warmer in the bedroom. Or, or in the summer, hey, it's cooler in the bedroom. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it was just on. And that's global warming. That's that global warming trick. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The friction. And then they go in there, you left some ice in your bed. <laughs> I mean, that's a bit much, kind of. Um, do you think, I just thought about this, bro, and I don't know if this is probably, this might be gay or not, and I might, I don't think I'm gay, but what have you heard, you know? Yeah, but what I mean, I'm saying is this, do you think having a guy give you a blowjob would probably be pretty intense, bro? Because dude, you ever seen a dude eat something real fast? They're pretty quick they go in the fast. jowls. Plus, just physically, their throat is longer. Oh. They have bigger heads. Bro, it's so, kind of scaring me yeah, a little. so you get an extra, like, quarter inch. Oh, you I need, need that. that soft blowjob, I need that lady blowjob. Yeah, but are their tongues, like... Like I'm gr sure gruffer, you know. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, think about it, bro. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you could, if you accidentally put two uh, Kit Kats in your mouth, you could separate them with your tongue in your mouth. Yeah, girls can't do that. No, no. You have to we, take them back out women and have a friend help break them. <laughs> you break my hair while I break this Kit. Dude, Kat. that's now that's what I bet if somebody if a now if a man if they have a man who's homosexual yeah. and he convinces you into getting you know oral with him i bet he 
It's a. I bet he once he once he puts the jaws on you. I bet it's a pretty strong case. You ever have a dude like really like make a case for it? Like, oh yeah, I'm better at it. I got trapped I... in the bathroom on the way to the. Yeah, I was trying to do some airport. I was heading to the airport, but everybody's doing cocaine. Nice. <laughs> what in the? At a party. Oh okay. Sorry, I stopped to drink some. Yeah. But yeah, I was at a party and they had a man. He had some cocaine. He tried to lock me in his bathroom and give me a blow job. Yeah. <laughs> And that shit made me nervous, bro. <laughs> I went at the uh, Rage once with my gay friend. Mm -hmm. He called that whole strip of uh, of uh, L.A., West Hollywood, Mecca. Oh, yeah. That's what he referred to it as, Mecca, between Mickey's and Rage. Oh, you know. And um, Oh, that's Nut Alley, bro. Yeah. Dude, I drove through there one time and some bunch of fucking nut hit the windshield. Oh, like, yeah. Jesus, <laughs> Dry, bro. Yeah. It's windy today, <laughs> you know? Nut, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, but he said he was pissing and this dude was just like staring at his dick. And the guy, he's like a new gay, Andrew Gandrew, and he was like, uh, he was like, can you not look at my dick? And the guy just goes, oh. yeah. And then right back to it, like, no, it's a cra crazy request that is. That's wild, man. But I guess I, I'm just trying. Dudes to are think. sluts, bro. That's the thing, dudes are sluts. Dudes are sluts. But I'll go in a meeting sometimes. This is when you start to feel like I think what it feels like to be women in some instances. When you go into a meeting, and the man in there is you know he's a prefer he prefers the company of men and you're in there talking to him and he wants to you could tell he's like listening to the show you're pitching yeah but, but at the looking. same time he's just like you know all he can think about is just fucking you know rubbing it oh just fucking just basking in the fucking glory of your nuts i would like to say that's wrong but i've done that to like mediocre looking women in my head once in a while where i'm like oh, i wonder what <laughs> oh yeah especially if it's a boring pitch you like yeah. you tune out and you're just like you're like oh yeah how can I get this cum out of me? Yeah, dude, that looks so much like a wig. I, it's crazy, the puff up you got. Plus with the side shaved. Oh, my hair? Yeah, it looks, I mean, it really looks put on. Like, like. Does it really? Yeah. <laughs> like this? It doesn't even look like, oh, yeah. <laughs> Does it really? Do that one or do the push up the, the muscle where you push them to the side? That's a, oh, like, I know that, like that? Yeah, and then <laughs> punch it up. And I'm like, what? Dude, they had this lady named Big Sal when I used to work on this farm. I used to work on this farm in Mississippi and, um. And they had this lady over there named Big Sal, and she was a lesbian. Yeah. And she was probably one of the top. Story checks out. Yeah. Two lesbians, you know, within about a 200-mile radius. And she, um, one time where they had these kids, and we're, she worked at the same place I was working at, and we're going to swim, and the kids didn't know that she was a lesbian. And we're just driving back to the house, and, and uh, one of them was like, hey, let's go swim. And Big Sal goes, oh, I don't have a bathing suit. And one of the kids goes, oh, you can borrow my dad's. <laughs> so the kids said <laughs> So and the kids were young; they didn't know. They didn't they were know like, any better. Yeah, they were like five and, and seven. You know, dude, my brother lives in Zurich, so you know it's white. Oh, you know? is it? Yeah, yeah. It's Switzerland. And uh, he said, but there's some other you know races in there. But kids don't know any better. I remember being little and seeing a kid. I was like in seventh, eighth grade. I knew better, but then seeing some like ten year old pointing at a wheelchair guy, mm -hmm. like the mom's like slapping his hand down. But like, look, mom, what's yeah. you know? They don't know. Transformer, they called him. Transformer. Yeah. But so anyway, this kid was like, they saw this black family was there in the neighborhood. And this their little kid, their seven-year-old, like, Mommy, why is that guy's skin wrong? Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, she quiet, like, no, Mommy, his skin is black. And she's like, shut up. Wow. Yeah, so you're getting me in trouble. But they, the kids don't know. They're just like, that's different than I'm used to. Yeah, kids don't know. Yeah, it's got to be wild, I guess, when you're a kid. I mean, and now in some areas, though, now I think if you grow up and they're teaching you about it, like they probably do in school here, uh -huh. or maybe they don't teach you in school teach you about here. about what? Like about, about, yeah, somebody's gay or somebody's, you know, um, a different ethnicity or different, you know. I think they do, right? I don't know, but I think feel like they, they would, so you're prepared to, 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 to see them. They probably go too far and, and teach you about stuff you probably never even come in contact with. Or do they think it's offensive to teach about it now? Like, that's the one thing where that I wonder. you grew up, probably. But, but I, right, where I grew up, it was probably like, I wish they would have taught more, like, hey, you know, people are, they, they, they would have shown more the ways that people have similarities in their lives and dissimilarities, uh -huh. if that's a word, you know, or opposites, you know? Like, they would have shown, okay, well, Statistically, these families have more opportunity, or these families make more money, or these. Oh, that shit. If they would have taught you that as a kid, I think you would have more of an understanding, maybe how things worked. Yeah, instead of hitting you when you're 35 and be like you're evil, I'm like, wait, what? Yeah, what did yeah, I do? How come I never heard that? Yeah, did you have black tires in your car when you were young? Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, you should have put the fucking white ones on. They didn't have white ones. Yeah, they did, motherfucker. You didn't look. Yeah, you know who had those? Black people. Yeah, white walls. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dude, I remember. Yeah, they didn't have a lot of, uh, but I wish they would have taught us more when we were young. 
you know, when they would have taught us more. I, or when kids are young, they're impressed. You can. I wish I, my dad would have spoken Hebrew to me. He never did. Really? I, I would have known it really well instead of just get by. Yeah, why not? Teach a kid a language, a second language? Yeah. For sure. Think about that. All you got to do is leave a fucking radio on with some second language coming out of it. You just have it. You just got it. I know all the kids in like rural Israel and like Akko and places like that. Like they knew, the kids knew fluent English from TV. Yeah. And the parents couldn't say a word of it. It's That's crazy. crazy. Well, it's also crazy too. You see like second generation Mexican kids and they don't speak any they don't Spanish. Know Spanish. Like, yeah. What are you doing? And they don't give a fuck, bro. Like, bro, dude, you got to learn it, bro. Yeah. Even I know I got to learn it. Yeah, I'm trying to learn Spanish next, yeah, Spanish yeah. or Russian. <laughs> Spanish because to get by in like SoCal and Russian because, you know, soon we're all going to have to learn Russian. Yeah. You think that's where it's headed? I mean, you know, they're, say, they're laying the law down, man. They're going to take over soon. I wonder where it's. Sometimes I start to wonder. They're smart. Like, I, I started to think the other day that it might be a good idea to go back to state government. I think it would, especially when you go to Utah and you realize like, oh, you care generally the state about different things than we care about yeah and so it's like we're not all exactly the same so i think they should have more states rights yeah you know you should vote on certain things like weed being legal in california and then but then like connecticut's like well now they are but like i don't know say i was like we don't want that it's like all right well don't but right. we do want it so you do your thing we'll do ours yeah instead of constantly having because then there's less places to put like people's arguments too it's like it's not always this national debate yeah and like move to a state where that's cool yeah also if you like the outdoors utah colorado those are your states yeah if you like you know? fire malibu california is for you yeah i started too many of those fires last last few years did you yeah i go over there with cigarettes i light up a bunch i just kind of throw them on leaves oh yeah kevin nealon does that oh really yeah yeah he was saying that oh, same i gotta thing. get into that with him mm. yeah maybe we could <laughs> go that together create a perimeter that's what they call it you know perimeter of fire um, what do you think? So, what do you what are you feeling like with comedy these days? Do you feel like we're headed back in a direction where people are going to say whatever the fuck they want? Do you feel like we're getting more cornered? What are you feeling like? I was feeling like for a while there, like it was really tough to be a man. Like right around the election, it felt very scary. Well, the now, three days after the election, especially in New York, because that's a bubble. You live here; it's another bubble, right? So those people couldn't even comprehend that Trump could have won, right? You know. Yeah, they couldn't you're, all, you're around 98%. And the funny thing is they're looking for enemies in their bubble. It's like, Anybody. you said this exact word wrong. Like, that ain't your enemy. Yeah. You're all on the same team here. You know, you got like 2% not on your team. Everybody, go somewhere else and find them. But yeah, those three days afterwards on the subway, every dude was just sitting there like, like, oh, like looking rapist, down. Not a rapist. Yeah. Not a rapist. And every woman's looking like, fucking, you did yeah. it. You did it. And I'm like, I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I didn't even vote. Yeah. Did you just come on me? Some lady said to me just out of the blue. Yeah. I was like, what? What are you talking about? Yeah. They're just ordering a muffin. <laughs> you know, like these ladies are pissed. Bro. There is a weird thing where they, we get blamed for everyone's, like, we all get blamed for everyone's thing. And it's like, they're like, they're like, yeah, it's kind of like, I don't know, racist or, or, or mis misandrous or whatever. And it's like, yeah, but I wouldn't do that to you. Some right. guys would, but I wouldn't. So why are you doing it to that? Yeah, I don't understand it. And the but like, they said this, my friend said this, showed me a, vi uh, uh, a clip of this guy at a music festival in Australia, came up behind a girl and came in her hair. Oh, wow. And she was like, fucking men. And I was like, oh, no, yeah. fucking Australians. Yeah. Why am I the group? Why yeah. aren't the people who did it? You guys, the men and women of Australia, not me. I didn't part of it. I never came in anybody's hair. Oof. No, I did, but not on purpose, you know, strays. Yeah. But, you know. Oh, yeah. Some when you come, you don't know what's going to happen. Yeah, it goes where it goes. You know? I honestly think right now it's the best time in a long time to be a comedian. Mm. I think we are now become counterculture for the first time, maybe since Lenny Bruce or maybe since Kinnison. Comedy's cool again. It's underground, especially in New York, where you got to literally go downstairs in most of the rooms to be in these basements. And people going in there going like, you, they know the fucking all the stuff they hear about rape jokes and race and gender. And they're like, this comic might not just say something offensive. Might He might be putting his career on the line. Yeah. And that is fucking cool, man. It's like the Cotton Club back then when Batman's parents got killed, you know? Yeah. It's like, this is some dark shit and they're happy to be part of it. Oh, some lady at the store the other night was like, I heard I might even get raped here. And I was like, <laughs> what? No, but she's like, I kind of hope so. I just shop around? She's like, I can't even get raped in this city anymore. <laughs> I'm like, that's crazy, lady. That's crazy, but yeah, it depends on who's here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> is it different in New York and LA? Because you're back and forth. You live in New York mm -hmm. and you're out here a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a little different. But then, you know, the store is different than LA too. The comedy store is its own subsection. Yeah. Now, what's the vibe? Are people jealous of the store? I feel like because there's definitely kind of a group at the store that is in mm -hmm. and that is getting to perform a lot. I mean, I, I mean, I'm doing better now, you know? 
you know, now that I have like my Netflix special on Netflix, double negative, Ari Shafir, double negative. Yep, right Ari Shafir, double negative. And I was on your show and unfortunately I missed it. Oh, this is not happening. I, I missed the one oh, that yeah. it was right when you guys had that falling out. Oh yeah. Um, um, and I didn't mean to bring that up, but, but I also was trying to push the show. <laughs> yeah. No, a lot of good stories on there. For yeah. Sure. A lot of great stories yeah. on there. Just so I'm just saying extra places you might know Ari from if you don't already know him. Yeah. Um, well, what was the question? I forgot. We were the question was, we were talking side. about, um, oh, is it different in New York? Oh, yeah. Well, they see, uh, they see, they see this the store. comedy store. Yeah. It's like, if I wasn't doing those things, I know that I probably wouldn't be getting spots there now. I might be grandfathered in from having been there a long time. But yeah. if my career is going better, I'd still, I, you know what? I'd be getting on, but it'd be 1145, 1230. You know what I mean? Because there's no room. Yeah, it's so tight. they see, yeah they see those lines of stores like Jesus, but then when the when they look at it, it's like a Sam Morrill would look at it, you know, or Mike Vecchione or or some like Metzger or Big J, like, well, where am I going to go in that lineup? So it's like it's cool they have those lineups. Where's like a good now relevant comic going to go in there? Yeah, and where would you want to? Some places it's like, you know, like I usually get up kind of towards the end of some of these lineups, and it's like, man, I don't want to go out. Like some of these guys, it's scary to go after. I call in for late because you can't get a workout anymore there. Yeah, it's a, it's a showcase room and not a fucking workout room. Yeah, you know. Yeah, the belly room's kind of become the place to really go work out stuff. You can go to the factory and get a workout. That used to be the place where you try to go get a development deal. Oh, you can go to the factory and buy antique furniture too. I don't know if you've been there recently, but it looks like an antique <laughs> shop. It's, old. it's yeah. so weird. It's so weird because that was the spot. I and mean, when the store was failing and nobody was there, I mean nobody was there. We wouldn't even start on time because we kind of wait till we had six people. <laughs> so we waited an crazy. hour before we got six people, and like. That's crazy. Yeah, and blows the my mind. was mobbed every night. I'm like, if I can get in there, I knew I could do something. Yeah. What's his name? Got that development deal from the chick from uh, from a Bird Box. She gave uh, that Mexican guy Sandra development Bullock. deal. Yeah. She saw not Paul Rodriguez, the other one. Orlando Leyva. No. He had his own TV show for a long time. They were in Bird Box. Oh, Guillermo no. from no, uh, no, no, no. She Sandra Jimmy Bullock Kimmel? is the one from Bird Box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But she saw a, a Latino guy. No, he was really big for a while. He oh, choked uh, Mencia. Oh um oh I'm I'm thinking of uh uh who is it um the Undertaker no <laughs> who is it I don't know his name he's Mexican oh one of the big uh, not Paul oh dude this reminds me I was at a funeral actually one time I was at my buddy's grandfather's funeral and there was a Mexican guy like helping dig the hole and he fell into the no way thing. Yeah. you know I used to work at a cemetery. No way, did you? Yeah, Arlington National Cemetery. Oh, that's oh really? I've been there. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. It's gorgeous. We dig them, and then when we were waiting for the truck to pick us up on those ninety degree plus eighty percent humidity mm -hmm. days, we'd hang out in the in the open graves. Wow, was it court ordered? <laughs> to hang out in there? No, to be working there. No, it was my first job. Oh, 16, that's cool. Six thirty six an hour, G one. Damn. Yeah, man, it was great. We were like, we have, have like a beautiful cemetery. It's gorgeous, dude. And you have the old ones, like like Abner Doubleday and Joe Lewis. They're all there with their big one, but they have rows and rows and rows of like those those fallen soldiers. You know? Yeah, it's gorgeous. Do you think it's like I definitely noticed? Like, obviously, it's or <clears throat> it feels like there's a softness to like the youth these days, right? Fuck yeah. But do you think that's because we're so far from a wartime that it's like they don't like at least we would hear our grandfathers. Or somebody talk about war and talk about this, you know, a real, we, like... Maybe, but we've been at war for the last 20 years. But in a way that's really yeah, affected us at a... Yeah, we don't, see it. we don't a, see it. It's just kind of this abstract idea. Like, I guess we're in Yemen. I don't know. Right. I guess we're in Afghanistan. Are we still in Afghanistan? No one really knows. You don't see, like... You would assume, like, from, like, the Wonder Years when you see videos and pictures of Vietnam on the, on the TV. We don't really get those anymore. I yeah. Mean, I mean, uh, Bush said, you know, no no pictures of the... Of the um, of the caskets coming home, and then uh, and then Obama reversed that, but then they still just didn't show pictures of the caskets coming home. It's like they don't want us to have that idea anymore that we're defending a country that it's this George Lopez. That's it. it. Oh, George Lopez, really yeah. cool guy actually. Yeah. Worked with him a couple times. I always thought he was very nice. I believe it. But anyway, he was getting deals out of the factory, and wow. I was like, "Fuck, why can't I be there?" That's why these anybody complains like the economy started to have enough women. It's like, "Fuck off." Where were you when there were six people in the audience? Yeah. You weren't trying to get in there. Were you trying to throw a show there to get people out to the Fuck club? Fuck you. Yeah. I did. I noticed this the other day. Women don't want to be Uber drivers. Like, women are saying they, you know, that, that there's this opportunity, you know, opportunities for, dude, fucking, I'd love to have a lady pick me up. You know? You think I I've want a, a few, guy? But there's not many. You think I want a young gay man handing me a butterscotch every day from the front seat that's a little bit warm? 
and keeping the windows down while we ride? What the fuck is going on, dude? I'm in the back of a fucking man's car eating a butterscotch with the windows down? Dude, and not getting molested, bro? Yeah. Baffling. I mean, that is why it's a backseat. <laughs> Baffling times. Yeah, I've had a couple of gay guys like, why don't you drive? I'll get behind you. And I'm yeah. like, I don't know, man. This doesn't <laughs> seem like crazy. the proper Uber techniques. Dude, one time an old lady, this Persian lady, she was the worst fucking driver. Her husband must have just cut her off financially. Yeah. And she was driving to the airport. I said, man, I said, I cannot. It was unbelievable. And she let me drive and I fucking drove us to the airport in her Uber. No fucking way. Yeah. Pretty cool, man. And it was a Ford Taurus that she had. Somebody had painted her themselves with like a like kind of a rose gold color, and like it was a piece of shit. Man. You ever have a coked up Uber driver? <laughs> oh, dude. Yeah, it's great. They go through red lights and they go, oh fuck, and then back up through it. I'm like, you already threw it, man. Calm down. Like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm putting it in. Just head down last thing. Like, where are you going? I'm like, I'm putting it in. Just wait a second. Just keep going. You're fine. <laughs> go through another red light. It's crazy. And I'm like, hey, do you mind if I put my seatbelt on? I'm like, why? Why? I'm like, oh man. <laughs> yeah, dude. When you put it on, the click of it makes him like, can you quiet down back there? Yeah. Five like, stars, right? Five stars. <laughs> <laughs> show me show me dude one time i was in uh i was in illinois in like rural illinois yeah and we'd eat we'd eaten some acid right and we got pulled over by these cops in this convertible okay <laughs> right. dude and it was winter time right and so they're like all right put the car put the car put the top up get home you know they let us off they didn't realize we we're on lsd right so we go driving off on these back roads fucking living it up and dude, the sun is coming up and we find ourselves on the exact same road headed right back where the fucking cops are and they're still sitting there. And it's like two hours later and we're like, no fucking way. The only place we could not go is right here. And we can't, can't fucking turn around. turn around now. I'll see you. So here's. You can't see a cop and then stop. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember, yeah, yeah. Like, oh, we're going after that. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I remember we put the top back down so we thought there would be less car for the cops to see as we went by. <laughs> So maybe they wouldn't see us. Fucking acid logic. Oh, dude, yeah, acid logic. And went as slow as possible, bro. <laughs> Thinking maybe we're making too much noise. Because everything makes so much noise on acid. And we were just fucking <laughs> as quiet as could be, bro. And they're just like... Oh, all went straight to jail. Direct, got All three got taken into the county courthouse. Really? Oh, yeah. Directly. But, bro, the fucking moment we were passing by, I'm just hoping they wouldn't fucking hear us. Probably doing four miles an hour with the top <laughs> down on a fucking frigid morning in rural uh, rural Illinois. Shh. Damn. That was the last thing I heard somebody Cold. say before the lights went up. Shh. <laughs> they can't hear us. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's probably not for us. Keep going. Um, Did you ever have somebody catch you and they still refuse to admit you've done anything wrong? Oh, dude, Yeah. We were in La Jolla, the comedy store, in the mm -hmm. condo. Me, Renazis, and Caparulo. Oh, wow. The Best Friends Forever tour. Just two gigs. We ordered 280 <laughs> t-shirts. Just our, 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 We sold seven of them. Um, yeah, uh, I dude. still have four myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, Cap had this rocket launcher. It was this thing this with a with, with oh, yeah. giant like rubber band, and you have this little cradle on the inside, and you have two guys. One guy hold it here, and mm -hmm. one guy hold it there, and the other guy just pulls oh, for back abortions. as far as you can. Oh, yeah. for abortion would be great. Get rid of an abortion. <laughs> launch it away. So we launched balloons. For a while, we hit people on the beach. You stayed at that condo, yeah, there, right? Beautiful. So it's far. We're hitting people by the fucking wake. Right. And they, they see a balloon blow up next to them. They're looking around. They're not looking 800 yards back. Oh, yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah. Anyway, we start launching at people. And then uh, at night, we're just trying to hit passersby on the boardwalk. We hit this guy and uh, with his girlfriend. <laughs> oh, he, was, he sounds like a real asshole. <laughs> yeah, he did nothing wrong. He was black, but he was like Tony Gwynn black. You oh, know? wow. Yeah, <laughs> Tony yeah, Gwynn, yeah. Carl Malone black. Where, oh, like, yeah, that's Cecil Fielder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, so anyway, he was like, hey, motherfuckers, what you doing in there? And we were like, oh, fuck, hi. And he, goes, he comes right up to the fucking balcony. He goes, dipshits, I fucking see you in there. And we're like, he doesn't see us. We're all like crouched down. He goes, I see you one behind that cat counter. That's behind the chair. And we're like, shh, quiet. He doesn't know. He goes, there's a line of broken balloons. Like, traced all the way back straight to our balcony. Like, it's so obvious. And we're like, don't move. Eventually, he just gets tired. He goes, fucking dipshits. And fucking walks away.
<laughs> Dude, one time I was in uh, La Jolla or Cyber San Diego, and they had somebody. I was walking down the street. Um, I w- it was with my this girl that I was seeing, and I was. They had like this cool store, so I just go look in the windows. It's nighttime, and there's just you can't really see in there that like, good until you put your face up to the glass. And there's two people fucking right when I put my face up to the glass. Damn! Like, Whoa, kind of crazy. Cool. Yeah, but um, <laughs> you ever do that end laugh? <laughs> Okay, dude. One time, my buddy got a blowjob in in middle. Sounds great. In junior high school. Oh, okay. oh dude, There's it more was, to yeah. it. Yeah. All right. And the parents of the girl who blew him found out and came over to my buddy's mom to my buddy's house to have so the parents could sit and talk about it, right? Because this was like the first blowjob that had gone down in our town. Damn. So, dude, I'm like, bro, you gotta leave me on the phone for this, you know? <laughs> yeah, I would hear it. So, sure. yeah, he put the phone on if I could put it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and put it in the living room with them, just like put it under the, the chair. Cord. Yeah. Oh, bro, no, it's when they first had cordless, dude. Oh, nice. So I'm just sitting there. The parents came, they all sit in the living room. The mom got them all some Shasta or something. And they sitting in there splitting a couple cans of Shasta, talking about the blowjob. And in that meantime, while that was happening, my buddy and the girl went into the other room and he almost got another blowjob from her. What? It's pretty crazy. Yeah, man. you're not going to stop that. Did my first. People are sucking dick probably till the end of time, unless that goes out of business. Yeah, you're in your period. You got to figure out, you know, necessity. Or you just feel adventure. like sucking somebody's dick. Yeah, I got my first blowjob in a park, Sligo Creek Park. Oh yeah, and it was at night. I went. Uh, this girl, well, she's married now, I think, but like, she. Uh, Tabitha. Tabitha. Tabitha Jenkins. Tabitha. <laughs> um, <laughs> Not her. Uh, so she got a got a. a, a blanket and put it out there and she started like oh wow who brought the blanket you or her she did she taught oh, me everything cool. she taught me everything i hadn't known that was even possible and she had tits or just chest she had tits big oh, yeah. nose big nose oh, yeah but i was oh man but she was like she started blowing me and then the cops showed up oh it's yeah park at night they like to watch i never did anything like that before and they're like excuse me and i just remember like get away officer <laughs> like walk away <laughs> this is not for you to stop it felt so good oh yeah <laughs> Oh, your dick feel like a um, eel that never has met its family. Until oh my god! Explosion. What? What is that? Yeah, yeah. And how Close quiet up, it is! All you can hear is yourself getting joy. Yeah, that's crazy, huh? Sometime a girl around the holidays put a little jingle bell in her mouth. Oh, really? Mm, yeah. <laughs> Sometimes the black girls would do that. Oh, <laughs> let you know you got a little. Well, just before. something seasonal. Yeah. You know, something to keep everybody in, in the mood, you know? Yeah. Um, what else is going on? What else do you think about the industry? I'd love to th- get more of your thoughts on the on the comedy industry right now. That's interesting. You feel like we're in a boom and that's an, that it's an boom, exciting time. Bro. I'm just about to go to Australia for the first time. Oh, you're going to kill it there. Really? Where are you going? Yeah. Oh, we're going almost everywhere. I think we sold, sold we? a bunch of tickets. Just me. Oh. But um, oh. yeah, me and my hypothetical oh, wait, friends. So, so I don't feel alone. Okay. But going to Perth, uh, Brisbane. I would say hit Perth because Sydney. it's so far out there. There's yeah. a nude beach in Perth. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's fucking great. It's disgusting. It ain't like the French Riviera. It it's ain't. It's just fat, gross. I never liked the French anyway. It's a bunch of Joey Diaz's. Oh, yeah. But old. Imagine him in like 10 years, and they'll check you out when they pass. But it's nice. You're out there. Just mm-hmm. let your dick shine. There's this island right off there that you could have gone to with his quokas. Robin animals. Island, huh? Yeah. But here's what Nick Cody told me. So there are these dunes behind that nude beach, and that's mm-hmm. where all the gay guys go to fuck each other. And oh, suck wow. Dick. Yeah. Shinley Park. <clears throat> and right behind that, there's an SAS testing ground. So one guy in the army, his job was to go clear the dunes of gay goods, gay fucking. Mm-hmm. And he was like, guys, stop sucking dick. We're going to launch missiles now. Yeah. And they're like, everybody, I'm serious. We're launching <laughs> missiles. And he's go up and down, but they're hiding. Like, I, I'm not going to stop this dick sucking, you know? It's worth the risk. They ain't hitting every dune. <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a job. Wow. Uh, yeah, you got to go scuba dive Great Barrier Reef if you're there. Yeah, like you, did you do that? I did it last time. It's, it's worth going to, huh? For sure. I can give you a liveaboard that's there for like a, a grand for like three, four days with a room. It's, what is a liveaboard? You just live on board. They take you out way out uh, because there's crocodiles if you just go off in the... In Cairns, there's no... You can't swim. There's crocodiles. So I can't just go right off the coast and do it? Uh-uh. You got to go on a boat and they got to take you away from the crocs. Jesus. But they take you around the other end of the Great Barrier. Have you scuba dive at all? Yeah. Oh, for sure. Oh, no, I haven't been scuba diving. Snorkel. You can snorkel, too. Or you can take lessons while you're there. But you can they can have a place where you can snorkel. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. It's and that's by the shore? You got to boat out to that as well? Boat out, but take an extra few days at the end of it. Jeff Ross taught me that, man. You, when you go do a long trip like that, take a day or two to yourself. 
to make it a fun trip instead of just a work trip. Yeah. You know? So there's some cool hikes in uh, in Perth, like about an hour north or two hours north. These, these monoliths are fucking cool as shit. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'll show you some stuff you could do. Oh, they had a I monolith mean, you in a major... fucking neighborhood growing up. Really? This dude named Sammy, yeah. <laughs> and I told him one time that he graduated high school and he didn't. And he was mentally challenged. And, uh, and How did he react to that? Oh, he reacted great, but it just set a whole... You just don't do it, man. You shouldn't do that kind of shit because you can you can adjust somebody's life. You know, when they he thought he graduated, so then the he difference? would put up shit if his parents were trying to get him to school. He'd be like, I fucking graduated, you know. And then he started <laughs> wearing all of these. I mean, it's silly, kind of now, but he started wearing all these graduation outfits, you know. Yeah. So he fucking never graduated. <laughs> yeah, and he never graduated anything, and he was mentally challenged. Well, he was never gonna. It wasn't like it held him back. Was he or wasn't he? That's a big question. I think he was. Dude, one thing that blows my mind is if somebody's mentally retarded, you nowadays they don't tell them, so you just have this buddy yeah. who's no who's not doing things super great, but doesn't know why, you know. Yeah, dude, I'm telling you right now, in Australia, Melbourne and Perth, Melbourne's the most like woke city mm -hmm. but it's still it's nothing compared to here really and all your material the darkest shit you got they will love it dude they seem like such the nicest and most like amazing group of people it seems like you drinking now or not drinking not drinking you blowing now or not nope oh well you're gonna have trouble there rude really oh yeah it's a it's a it's a coke country oh wow it's a coke country and a booze country so i mean listen if you do relapse try to leave it there because it's a tough place. It's a tough place not to get anything with. That's what everybody's doing. Really? Yeah. They doing Day coke drinking. over there, huh? Mm -hmm. What kind is it? What the does it look like? Oh, really? Fuck. Yeah. It's my favorite. And they all do it. Mo <laughs> worst, most expensive coke in the world. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fucking do that shit, bro. Yeah. I'll hide a fucking kilo of that in my ass, bro. You and feel the me? Chicks like to fuck. They have the least. They list least instance. I think with one other country tied. Seven percent. No belief in God. So they don't give a shit about sex. They're like, fuck, let's fuck. Who cares? Oh, wow. Yeah. Even hitchhikers too, I bet. Probably. <laughs> it seems like the kind of place if people's fucking, they'll hitchhike. That's the old rule. I always thought if somebody smokes cigarettes, they're like, yeah, they're most likely to fuck. Oh, somebody used to say if they're down to smoke, they're down to poke. That used to be the <laughs> thing I would always hear. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think comedy's in a great space. What do you think it is? I think it's amazing right I now. think it is I think getting... people bitch about like the a blog against you or some some Twitter backlash, but Twitter backlash ain't real. Mm -mm. You know? That's the thing. Twitter backlash isn't real, and that's why I think Let him let him let him be against you. That's great for you. Yeah. A lot of these it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter anymore. You're, it's so quickly that people aren't even watching. Dude, the other day I watched so Brennan Schaub and I do a new podcast, The King and the Sting. Fuck yeah. Brennan Schaub and I do a new podcast, The King and the Sting, right? Schaub? Yeah. I thought it was Sharp. Uh-uh. He changed his dude. His father was in the army or something. Oh, really? But here's the deal. So we do one. I watched like 15 minutes of it before. I've never yeah. watched it before. And I was like, oh, and it retained my interest. I was like, man. Your own podcast? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. And that's hard. I mean, I think it's hard. For, you, 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 you never like watching yourself. But I was like, this isn't bad, you know? <laughs> right. So he, now he's got mental disabilities. Oh yeah, he got yeah. beat up. Somebody... I think he's full of retarded, or, oh, or at least yeah. like border. I thought I thought he tested. If I'm not mistaken, I, I saw a test where he tested like just under retarded. Oh yeah, he definitely he's come in second place a couple times. Yeah, you know? yeah, he has trouble if the door says push and it's pull. He, he oh, can't yeah. figure that out. Oh, we'll stand there. I saw him pressing the wall one time, saying it's not ringing. I wow. was like. It's not a doorbell. Yeah, and dude. you know you just gotta have compassion, and just like you know have patience with him. Yeah, just like tell that. him he's. Tell him he graduated. Yeah, tell him he graduated. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it is good hearing from you. I feel like you're like this oracle kind of guy who goes around and gets the, you know, you're like the guy, the messenger who goes out and gets the information from different places and come back and tell yeah, people. i trying to talk to real people. We get this bubble of comedy where you're like, oh, it's the end of everything. Like, it ain't the end of anything. Yeah. The only real problem facing comics right now are other comics. Yeah. That's the real issue. And I've been a fucking, I've done it too. And it's, I've been embarrassed by it, but like, and so what is that when we call when we call other comics out? It's just never a good idea on, on their comedy because because the reality is like whatever you want to do when they're like oh you're doing jokes about this like what you can't talk you can't shit on topic you shit on technique if you want but not publicly yeah but shit on technique not, not if I want to do a joke about flowers do a joke about flowers if I want to do a joke about Tinder do that if you want to do a joke about airplane do that but how are you gonna do it let me see your technique that's what matters yeah not what you're interested in how are you gonna examine it. You know, if I want to do a pro racist joke, but if I can turn the crowd and make them all laugh at me, then that's a great bit. And that's the goal. Yeah. Yeah. The goal is laughter. The goal is entertainment. And that somehow seems to be lost. And I think that that's where 
you know, people got really pissed with Hollywood. It's like, I don't want you to preach to me. I don't want you to tell me this. I just want you to entertain me. That's why I pay you. That's why I like Dunkirk. Yeah. Man, helping man. I love Dunkirk. I know. I saw a little clip of you doing that. I oh, yeah, that. dude. Probably one of the top 60 movies ever. Um, I mean, I would guess I like Tootsie as well, if you've seen that. Yeah, that's pretty good. She was hot in that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just like, whatever, man. People say it's like it's brave to do jokes or non-jokes about fucking whatever. I'm not gonna say my name, but like you know, when they just like forego comedy for a while to go on and fucking be serious about something, it's like so. But that ain't brave. Yeah, that's not brave. You're not taking any chances. You want to be brave? Do today in 2019. Do a nine minute pro slavery bit. Yeah, and get the crowd to laugh. That's brave. Try that and see how it depends your career. That's bravery. You're risking something. Well, yeah, I asked a guy one one night in the front row. They had a black gentleman up there. You yeah. know. And I was, you know, I wasn't, I was nervous, but I wasn't wild, you know? And I said, hey, man, would you own a slave? You think, honestly, you're chilling at home, right? A black, did you ask that to a black guy? Yeah. yeah. I said, look, bro, be honest. Be honest. You're chilling at home. Yeah. There's a bunch of dishes to do. Your yeah. wife's out of town. You maybe don't know how to do dishes or you don't like you don't doing them. Yeah, are you watching the game. It's yeah. Sunday, there's three games in a row. You're watching the game and the game is just two people just kicking a ball back and forth outside, right? Because it's the 1800s, <laughs> oh, right? right, right, right. Somebody got a bag of marbles, but still you're watching the game. Mm -hmm. And some guy goes door to door is like, hey, got these cool slaves and the slaves are cool. They're smiling. Yeah. You wouldn't, you would not we get We haven't somebody. put color on it yet. Yeah. We just said people. Yeah, we got these slaves, probably Asian. You know, Korean little, you know, some beautiful Korean. Yeah, take up less space. As Slavs, you yeah. know? Yeah. Would yeah. you get one? I think I would. I I'd, tr get. I'd treat it well, but then, no, I know get who I am. I would treat it well for a while, but then once they fucking act up, you got to lay the law down. Wow, damn. Right. It's like, damn. They, you guys, you bring it on yourselves. <laughs> you think I want to treat you like this? You bring it on yourselves. I want to be a good master. Yeah. I am a man of conscience. I, roll. Roll. I feel like you would have been good in that movie, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, here's the thing. There's something about like you would get if the guy didn't know anything, you would get a couple, a batch. If everybody was getting slaves at the time, of course you would get slaves. You yeah. wouldn't you wouldn't be the one who'd be like, I'd be, you know, more woke than everybody based on like, fuck off. No, you Do wouldn't. you think you would be a good slave? Be honest, dude. Well, let me think. Okay, I'm not uh, physically. I'm not the best. I could do a lot of like mental work for you. Okay, you know, like the way he did in Shawshank, where he was like, "Hey, you, you do accounting. Come, you're gonna work in the office now." You do the books now. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't run. I would accept that I have no power. I'd be pretty fast at that. I'd see somebody get whipped and stuff. I'm like, "Oh, I get it. No, I, that'll happen to me too, right?" Yeah. Right. No, I'm. Yeah, I get it. I'm, I'm chilling. smart enough to know that there's no way out. I might be looking for an escape plan. But I'm waiting for a while. Let a few people escape and then see how that plays. I'm not trying to be in the front lines of escape. Yeah. You're not trying to be the fucking first guy out there. Yeah. Yeah, I think I could easily do it. I always say ma'am to to, to, to to people who are helping me, you know, not even older women, just like people at the, the airport. They're like, do you have your tickets? Like, here yes, you go, ma'am. Here you go, ma'am. You know? Yeah. Um, uh, sir, yes, sir. You know, I, I could be respectful. Yes, sir. Uh, I get it. You run the household. Yeah. My mom taught it. me well. My dad taught me well. Yeah. I'm hoping to get a piece of cake at Christmas. I'm fucking. Uh, all gonna, the better. Yeah. I know you didn't have to do that, sir. Yeah. I really appreciate that. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. It was delicious. <laughs> That'd be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I shared a piece of I, it with my boy. That's crazy, man. Can you? Uh, uh, it's yeah. just wild that things happen. But it's also, it's like some things just go hey, over can time. Can I just one favor? Um, it's my wife and I's anniversary on next Thursday. Could you just like, just for one day, not rape her? Yeah. Just that one day. It'd be really cool. Give it a fresh morning with the lady. Yeah. Yeah. Just let me have a, a shot at her. Let us sleep in a little. Yeah. I'm not saying don't rape her at all. Just that one day. Yeah. Let us sleep till 6 15 a.m. if you don't mind. Yeah, but again, so. if it's if it's an issue, yeah. I, you know, it's obviously it's your call, but yeah. I would love that. Dude, how crazy. That must have been. That must I can't have been even crazy. Imagine. No, you cannot imagine. I can't even imagine that, dude. I would hate that yeah. kind of shit. I don't like getting up early that much. That would suck. That part would suck. Yeah, I like to sleep in. I'd be like, how about I'm like a like a you know until four a.m. slave. You know, I wake up at eleven. Oh, that night shift 4. guy. Yeah, I like the night. You know, there's less distraction. Oh yeah. You get more shit done. You don't bump into other slaves. Yeah, you're right there on the porch, ready to rock. Yeah. Like, oh yeah, he's with yeah, it. Yeah, they wake up in the morning like, what? Who bailed all this hay? Yeah, I did, Your Honor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just give him, hit, hit him with a your honor. Yeah. Make him feel even better. Um, we got some calls that came in for you, Ari. Oh, really? Let's hit a couple of them, yeah. Will you pre-record them? 
Yeah, we have people that hit the hotline. Dude, this is fucking Theo, this whole place, man. You got a screensaver art. Two fucking slaves of your own. You're on that art. White on the slaves wall. too. What? Who's yeah, that? Who's that, that gay parrot? That's Tony Hinchcliffe. Oh man. <laughs> Where am I? Oh, I see it. Yeah, there you are. With my old glasses. <laughs> yeah, there you are, man. That doesn't. Lo- it looks a little like. Uh, that looks like you actually, Sam. Yeah, Brogan. Where's Where's Scrape? There's Greg Scrape. Fitzsimmons. Yeah. There's Eddie Bravo in the front. Who's Ashton the monkey Kutcher. on top? That's uh, Burt Kreischer. No, that's Bobby Lee. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a pretty good picture. And for those nice listening, picture. we'll put this painting on Instagram so you can see it. Here's the first question. Okay, okay. go ahead. First of all, Theo Ari got a dark art survivor here. Gang, bro. Uh, in hold Atlanta, on, Georgia. On, on. And I've... What's dark arts? Theo Ari got People survive dark... the dark arts. The dark arts are things that take you out of your element to succeed. So excessive masturbation, doing drugs, you know. Australia, uh, it sounds like. Australia. So uh, wait, am I a dark art survivor if I do all those and don't let it hold me back? Gang, gang. Yeah, you're more of a dark arts master, I think. Yeah, yeah. Because, see, I struggle with it. So, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm always the fucking guy who's fucking up. But you really seem like a, be a real savant. Like, you're slithering. Yeah, oh, yeah, you know? yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah. I'm just some fucking Hufflepuff who keeps fucking, you know, <laughs> copping bags, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, but, yeah, you've you mastered the art. So, is this kind of like Proud Boys, but like your own sect? Yeah, uh, no, this guy's just a guy who probably is trying to stay off of drugs and maybe trying to not to jerk off at night. Okay, that's cool. Those yeah, are shower, big, dude. Do it in the shower. Yeah, those are our big nemesis. All right. Dark art survivor here uh, in Atlanta, Georgia. And hey. I have a question for both of you guys. Um, Ari, I know you got a vasectomy this past year. True. What made you come to the conclusion that you oh. never want to have kids? And Theo, do you ever plan on having kids? Gang, gang. Gang, gang, baby. There you go. Gang Gang from Juicy J? What's that from? Gang Gang just white people trying to fucking be cool. Okay. Um, what made me come to the decision? Because, man, I take too many chances. Do I you? I take too many chances. You're that and glum look, rocker, huh? Yeah, and the odds of me having a kid with a with a woman I really like met and want to have a kid with, which, by the way, I don't, but if, if that's the angle that I want to go with, the odds of that happening versus some fucking skank in Kansas City that I didn't even know her full name. Some Muppet. Yeah, and now I'm fucking li- life with her forever. Some zygote hustler trying to fucking rock that little bag of bones out of you. Yeah, the odds are way higher on that. Oh, wow. So I'm and are like, you coming in, ladies, or what are you doing? Sometimes. Wow, what a crazy or guy. Like, or I, I had a lady once in, in, in Indianapolis, like, I can't get pregnant. I was like, oh, hell yes. And I came inside her, you know, it was good and all. And then like a year later, she's like, I, I got, I'm pregnant with this wow. other guy. And I was like, well, I thought you couldn't get pregnant. She never responded, but I was like, fucking what? I took such a massive chance. Yeah, you can't believe somebody who says they don't have any ovaries. Yes, you can. When you got a boner, you can believe anybody. Wow, that's true, huh? Uh, That's that belief stick. Oh, yeah. Like, oh, fuck. I got an infection of the, I'll believe anybody. I had a chick in Nashville. I I was like, I I like to, okay, I'm not an idiot. So I was like, hey, I don't have anything, you know, or I've had like chlamydia in the past. Try to like hit him. Mm-hmm. With, I've had something, you know. To yeah, like, I've only had two beers, officer. Yeah, yeah. Do you have anything I should know about? And if they're like, yeah, I'm like, cool. I'll wear a condom. No big deal. You don't have to tell me what it is. Um, but then I'm like, hey, if the worst should happen, like I don't want trying to get you pregnant, but if it happens, like, would would you get an abortion? Just uh, you know, quick, yeah. quick, okay. I've asked that. And this chicken Nash was like, oh no, I would never get an abortion. I was like, oh damn it. And then she was like, just put it in for a second. Then I was like, fuck, I'm doing this. Wow. Yeah, a couple strokes. fatherhood. So Jim Painter always said, a couple clean strokes, there's not really sex. Yeah. How many strokes will you do? How many strokes before that bus five. will you pull out? Do you have to be to feel safe? There's different times in my life. You know? Oh wow, bro. Yeah. I've been uh, like I've been Buffalo one of those, Bill over uh-huh. here, dude. You're like John Henry, the steel driving man, bro. <laughs> You're going in. I've been one of those why waste the best parts, like the core of the watermelon. You know what I mean? And just you bust? don't want you don't want to leave no, you don't want to leave like strokes on the table oh yeah you know I, know. I mean if you're like let me pull out i'm about to come it's like yeah but you got two good strokes left yeah don't waste man. those good strokes those, those are the best strokes those greens in regulation baby yeah, yeah i want to be i used to do a bit about it, but i want to be i want to pull out and go uh, i don't i'm not positive yeah <laughs> yeah like do a wipe down i'm like i don't know i've paid for many a fucking morning after pill oh have you yeah well some dudes used to just put it in there oh attach it to your dick no, put oh, yeah, 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 sneak it in. Yeah, that's tape that it trick. on there with like that, that uh, tape that kind of fades away. That's that uh, uh, surgical tape that fit, that you know. 
Oh yeah, glue like a not glue, but yeah, the one you when you get um, what's it called? Like stitches, jaw the stitches that come out. Oh like yeah, stitch in a, a, a morning after pill. Stitch a morning after pill <laughs> in the back of your dip. wiener. Yeah, yeah. it's like oh, you got ribbed. I'm like, like wow, right. your dick's yeah. got that nugget on it. And then other times I'm like, I'm gonna pull out. Like, I mean, it's never far in advance. I don't understand how in porno they they pull out and then they just like stand over the girl like this, mm-hmm. and they're like, yeah, and it's like. You pulled out too early. Why are you still doing this? Yeah. There's no cut. It should be pull out and go. There should be like no time. That bust, boy. Yeah. Dude, sometimes they have videos you used to be able to watch on pornography where somebody had set a lot of bass with the bust. So when they would bust, it would like. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> what? A lot different. Yeah. It was just like more bass filled, you know. You want kids? Busting, you know. Um, yeah, I'd like some kids, man. I think about maybe having four or five children, maybe. Damn, what? How old are you? I'm 38. No, nah, I ain't going to happen, but. You don't um, think? No. In LA, with these fucking vapid, empty idiots? I think I would probably Good maybe luck. fly to Na- I'd get a house in Nashville and maybe have them, That's have a family there. Yeah, okay. Outside maybe adopt Nashville. a couple of Latino kids, maybe. You adopt, know? I would go. That's another thing, too. Like, if I wanted kids, I'd, I think adopt I want a, a couple of Tinos go. running around, you know what I'm saying? Couple yeah. little fucking magic, little fucking, you know, sacks of salsa. You yeah. know, that's what I want, bro. A Vontino. Oh yeah, bro. Can you even imagine, bro? <laughs> yeah. Somebody's like, gang, gang, papa. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're fucking great, bro. <laughs> like, damn, dad, you're fucking up, dude. You're a fucking idiot, man. All your friends are coming in chicks. <laughs> yeah, bro. <laughs> That'd be so cool, man. Have a kid just like his and just learn Spanish from him. Have him teach me Spanish. Yeah, that'd be cool. Like, well, why would he know Spanish? It's not genetic. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true, huh? <laughs> You'd have to teach him. Well, yeah, somebody's going to have to teach him, and yeah. then he's going to surprise me and, he's and like, teach me. Papa. Yeah, hey, papa, man. <laughs> you got to fucking know Spanish, Dad. That was all the Spanish we know. Yeah, papa, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> that'd be awesome, bro. Orderly. But yeah, I wouldn't mind having some. And Really? Uh, oh, it's too much work. Also, like... But you, don't you feel greedy if you don't have them? In what way? Uh, not helping overpopulate the overpopulated earth? Right. No, it's greedy to have them. But just greedy, you won't be able to have that like emotional, know what that feels like to have like an emo- like a no, child. That's greedy to want that. When you know we're overpopulated, we know there's pound puppy kids that need adopting. Oh, yeah. And you're going to go have your own kid? That's greedy. Hmm. But but no okay so I want my I want a new one I want a fucking right. I want a pure breed dog instead of saving yeah. ones about to be put down yeah I want off. a ginger yeah, yeah. I, want, I want a I want I a, want it to have my eyes yeah it, th- guess what it'll have eyes it'll look like a human me and Reggie are having a cinnamon one it's like whoa yeah. let's see what's going on here <laughs> um let's uh <laughs> but yeah I, I think I do I think but they, no this is interesting so I'm trying to figure out if there's selfish reasons why I want one here's. But what if you feel? Th- do you feel like you could raise a child really well? You seem like a smart man. Oh, I'd be a great dad. You're able to take care be of. A great dad. Yeah. But I would abandon it and fake my own death. And oh wow! Move yeah, somewhere. I like that. But would you do that just to fucking impress him? <laughs> Your dad was cool. Well, Adam Egget said Adam Egget's father. You know, from the comedy Holocaust store. Holocaust uh, denier. Was he really? Oh, he is still. An HD. He passed away though. Adam His Egget? father. No, no. Adam Egget himself was a Holocaust, Holocaust denier. denier? Yeah. Look, some people are, dude. Look, it's like. You know, it's like slavery. They never found the boats, you know? Yeah. He's always like Stalin, Stalin. Yeah, worse. yeah, yeah. He doesn't think, he, I think he thinks like 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 a few hundred people died. Yeah. One of those. Like he's like something happened, but it wasn't even close oh, to what wow, we're talking damn. about. That's yeah. Morrissey if I can feed him all that bullshit. Mm-hmm. It was before he knew the word fake news. He was like kind of pretty much <laughs> describing that. He was like, nah, this, this picture should be doctored. I mean, I think it's a porn, but he's, yeah. really, he's really into it. <laughs> I mean, damn, when you think about it, he runs a comedy store, and he's the one that won't put any women up. They haven't had a single woman on the lineup in a month. And there's a Holocaust denier is the one at the helm. Yeah. Wow, they I should mean, really... business is better, but I guess that's what matters is fucking... Somebody should start a group. People. Somebody should start a women's hate group. Yeah. All those groups are hate groups, by the way. I'm sorry, all one. those blogs, hate groups. Yeah. Because I'm like, all you do is hate. I've seen your blogs, it's 80% negative. You're a hate group. Jezebel, you're a hate group. <laughs> Dude, what about... Um, what about... Now this sometimes with the Holocaust, it seemed like they have Holocaust. too many. Too many everybody, Jews. no, oh. no, they have. It's like, look, everybody's a survivor. Every week, there's another newspaper article. It's like a, a hundred and nine year old fucking. And you're like, what? That guy's a survivor. That guy's Mexican. You know, it's like they're starting to make <laughs> it like everybody. Like, come on, you man. As well, my dad's a survivor, but still, was, was your dad father really? Uh-huh. He was twelve, I think, when it ended. Wow. Yeah, but like in Romania, but like. uh 
Yeah, the thing is, no one can really tell. There's right. No, so there's yeah, a Holocaust survivor stamp. This starts to become that PR move where it's like you just any Jew, any person who's Jewish or just looks Jewish, they're like, yeah, he was a survivor, mm -hmm. and they're like, yeah, he got hit by lightning about three weeks ago in a fucking accident. Good, in Brooklyn. Why not? It's like faking yeah. your own uh, um, anti-gay attack. Yeah. <laughs> why not? Oh, that's true. <laughs> I got chemicals pouring on me. I'm a Holocaust survivor. Fuck it. You know what? I'm a Holocaust survivor. Yeah. I'm going for it. Actually, I tell this to people <laughs> you who are, yeah, <laughs> I'm telling this to people who like Jewish chicks or Jewish men who date who date uh uh non-jews yeah and they're like well you know we have to make them convert or they're not gonna like be accepted into this religion and i'm like here's the deal guys just tell everybody you're jewish yeah just say my mom was jewish my dad wasn't and my mom's mom was jewish and her dad wasn't and we're like technically jewish and they're like no, no, no. there's no there's no system of checks yeah so it's like you're just you they're like okay i guess you're a jew Big J Oakins is a Jew. You can't tell. Yeah. But you would like, never tell. Just say it. Who cares? Who gives a fuck about Jews? What they think? Just lie to them. Yeah. You know, leave, get off their fucking back. That's a Holocaust survivor. I'm telling you. <laughs> do it. <laughs> but there, I feel like, do you feel like it's harder to work in LA or it's easier to work in Hollywood being Jewish? It doesn't. I, that's a stereotype. We don't look out is for it? each other. It was just the only reason Jews are big and, and i'm not accused i'm asking that because no, i've heard both sides of it i've heard my friends say no there's so many jewish people out here that it's hard to even it's hard to f find a way to differentiate yourself and then there's well, also the school of thought that it's like yeah well jewish people help jewish people out you yeah, know okay so maybe so two ways so the back bar used to have a couple thai guys working and then they would hire pretty much exclusively thai guys you know at the comedy store yeah so in order to get a job there it really did help you to be thai you had to be thai yeah now the, another case Black, the NBA, is way more black than your normal standard ratio of people. Oh, yeah. But you can't be like, hey, I'm black. Can you get me in there? Right. It, it's not about that. It's about talent only. Right. You know what I mean? Jews don't hook up other Jews because you're a Jew because there's plenty of Jews to pick from. So they ain't looking for me. Right. And also, yeah, you ain't going to differentiate yourself because there's so many Jews. You got to differentiate yourself on something else. Right. Like, I don't know, funny or whatever else you talk about. Yeah. Dirty or clean or, you know, political comic. Dave Smith's a political comic. I'm a fucking filth pig. We're both Jews, but we're not, we're not banking off our Judaism. We're banking off our fucking style. Right. So if you, so if anybody thinks that, you think that that's just a fear. That's a silly. That's just a. It's just uh, anti-Semitism. It's called. Is it really? I mean, what, we don't hook each other up. Are you kidding me? Why do you think Jews are in Hollywood? Because we're fucking smart. That's the bottom line, you guys. <laughs> Why do Jews do well? We're just genetically smarter than you. I'd love to give you another explanation for it. We take care of our kids, we value education, and we crush it financially. I don't know what to tell you. The only thing I can tell you with is you can use this as an example to better your own lives. That's as much as we can help you with. We're busy succeeding. Fuck off. Wow. Do you feel a lot of anti-Semitism? Nah. Yeah. Mm -mm. One time when I was in a bus in, in Wheaton, Maryland, uh, there were these two punker girls, goth punker girls behind me, and they, were, they had one of those, you know those birds that go like this? You know, and drink. Oh, a toucan? No, but that, it was like those, those like little uh, th those toys, and they would drink the water. Uh huh. They'd put a glass of water, and they would go like this. Oh wow, keep... that's neat. You don't know what I'm talking uh -uh. about? You, you know what I'm talking about, right? You're calling it up. It was from the '80s. Bring the drinking up, bird. Remember that? Fuck no, I've never seen that fucking thing. Uh, it like what? goes up. You put some water, and just like tilts <laughs> over, drinks water, and then goes. We're back in a up. drought, dude. I'm not fucking playing with that. <laughs> anyway, they bought one of those at Wheaton Plaza. And behind me, me and I, it was my brother or Avi Schneider or somebody, they kept like hitting it to my yarmulke. Ah. And they were like, yarmulke pecker, yarmulke pecker. And we just sat there quietly, like, don't make a noise. Don't fucking instigate them. And they just kept hitting my yarmulke with this fucking drinking bird toy. But that's about as bad as it got. No big deal. No big deal, really. <laughs> do you, I feel like that kind of stuff like is on the, do you feel like it's on the decline? I guess. I, I they get think, more press about that. Right, I feel like now, there's more press these days about bad stuff happening than there is bad stuff happening. I know, and then they say that Pittsburgh shooting, you know, where they shot up that synagogue oh, in Pittsburgh, yeah. and people are like, that's terrible, and then Trump was like, it's because they didn't have armed guards there, and I'm like, it's not, they didn't shoot up a fucking conservative synagogue because they didn't have armed guards, it's so stupid. Yeah. The reason it happened is because it wasn't an orthodox synagogue. That's that fake conservative Judaism. What do you think was going to happen with a woman rabbi? You think God was going to protect you? You fucking idiots. You think he's going to allow that fucking heresy to happen and just not have you got shot? Stupid <laughs> idiot Pittsburgh conservative synagogue. Get a real male rabbi like you're supposed to because the Torah says you can be a judge. You got to be a man. Sorry. You can't Does it really? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. Because women, it's, uh, to be, a, to be a, like a rabbi, mm -hmm. read from the Torah, it's considered being a judge. Women can't be judges because... Talmud says, women, too emotional. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's interesting now. I mean, everybody tries to put like men and women in the same boat. And it's like, I've been thinking a lot about this recently because we're just doing this pilot for Comedy Central and it's about like 
one of the episodes was about feminism, right? And mm-hmm. it was Jim Jeffries came on and we went and listened to some like slam poetry and um, just, you know, some feminist ideology and just different feminists. And some of it was really cool and some of it was fucking, you know, gutter. And, uh, but it was interesting how like, yeah, it's like there's this push to make everybody like men and women, you know? What? That ever that were that were all that there's no real difference. Oh right, you know? exactly. But and I is, just don't I mean, know if it can physically. Obviously, there's a difference. Although some people on like college campuses are like there's no difference. I'm like, what do you mean? We're bigger. Like, yeah. But but do you feel like? But so if there's physical difference, then there must be like if men are bigger, like if that's then it's like there's other differences too. Yeah. Like some people say, nurturing is, is different in men and women, or the way, definitely the way people. I don't know if it's sociological. People bully each other. Difference men and women. Oh, definitely. So like. I don't know. There's, of course, there's differences. It doesn't have to be like you don't have to quantify it as better or worse, right? But there's differences. Yeah, women are dumb cunts, you know, and men are sometimes <laughs> are really smart, intelligent, like uh, free thinkers. So yeah. you know, it's all, it's all. But again, no, no better or worse. <laughs> sounds just like, like exactly like Jim Jeffries, man. <laughs> but yeah, I don't want men and women to be the same. No, exactly. So a lot of women are like, so they're split now. It's so weird. The feminism is split between like, let's say, a basic thing like, like, okay, in divorce, should there be you know, alimony or not, you know, should you pay child, not child support, but out, like whatever the breakup fee is. And some feminists are like, no, fuck that. We're making equal money now. You don't fucking pay us anymore. We're not yeah. these housewives that gave up our careers for that. I'm a lawyer. You're a lawyer. You don't have to pay me. And other women are like, fuck that. Men have abused us for years. We want that. And so we're going like, I don't know what your message is. Some women are like, stand up for me in the subway. Other women are like, no, my legs work. Fuck off. Yeah, I'm be pregnant. Fine. Yeah, but everybody else, no. In fact, I have less weight to pick up because I'm fucking five three and a. 112 pounds. If anything, women should stand up for me. Yeah. I'm 185 and overweight. Yeah. I need, I need my fucking legs to work. Oh, I can eat pussy standing up, a lot of these women are saying. You yeah. know, it's crazy. Yeah. It's different, man. I just worry that women are going to be inspired by, like, to be, get out there and be, live this man lifestyle that's not that fucking great, and then they're going to be lonesome because they don't end up having families, which I think are things that people enjoy. Well, I think it's when you talk about it in a binary world where like <clears throat> women want this instead of like, there's there are a multitude of things that go point. into it where it's like some want, just like you, you want a family and part of you doesn't, part of you likes being single, part of you wants a family, and it's like different men want different things. I definitely don't, yeah. you know? You lean towards it, so it's like everybody's different, and everybody puts it in these black and white, like women want this. Men want this. And the reality is people want what people want. Why do you think it's afraid for us to escape sometimes what our idea, like we have an idea of something, you know? Uh-huh. Like sometimes it's like, yeah, it's like this needs the way a marriage needs to be and a family needs to be. And then it's like when you start to think that maybe you might want something that's different. Something a little different. Or something, an alternative or something, uh-huh. anything different. There's all I, these polyamorous I, relationships now and stuff like that. I get that. scared sometimes to th- even think about some of that because I feel like it, it could work. Well, I feel like it could work maybe, but also, yeah, I don't know why that kind of stuff scares me. You I'm know? scared to watch um, anime porn. Yeah? Because. Was that like, the drawing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've never watched any, but I feel like if I did and I got into it, it would be like, it would just be my whole life after that. Oh, wow. You know? I don't want to lose myself to it. Same reason a lot of people don't want to take mushrooms, because like, I'm afraid I would like lose control. I was like, just fucking do it. I turn into Mr. McGregor and get lost, boy. Yeah. Start letting fucking that, let that rabbit run through your garden. Yeah, Let's hit another one right here. Let's hit another question that came in for Ari Shafir. <clears throat> hey, what's up, guys? What's up, dork? So, um, <laughs> my question is this. You wearing a, your mom's house shirt? Uh, Fuck off. Why you know do Tom Segura's a child molester. He has two children, too, living with him. Yo, he doesn't molest hey, his own children. I want that on the record. Tom Segura doesn't molest his own children. Only other people's children. Yeah. So, please don't take that out of context. Go ahead. So, um, my question is this, uh, get to it. <laughs> both of you seem to hate St. Louis. He went on for like a minute after that. I cut him off. So. what do he say? Oh. Uh, he why hate- do you guys both hate St. Louis? It seems like, he, Louis. it seems like he said, I don't, there's just no good comedy club there. Yeah. I almost got, mol- I didn't get molested, but I get somebody, you know, a couple guys touched my ass at once in a Ramada there in an elevator in East St. Louis and they had a, a shady, you know, Donnie Grins or some bullshit fucking halfway house comedy club was on the second floor of a Ramada. Really? That was the last time I've been there, yeah. Damn. Uh, yeah, I got no problem with St. Louis. I, I, I went to a wedding there with a with a, oh, with a a dude who had um, Tourette's. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he wasn't in the wedding, but he was up in the front. I didn't know. And I just heard this like, bok, 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 and I had no idea what it was. Oh, yeah. And I asked my friend. I thought it was like the, I thought it was the violin guy, like fucking up. For real, like damn, the finally yeah. got broke a string. And huh? I asked my friend, I was like, "Who hired this guy?" He goes, "No man, there's a guy with Tourette's up there." And I had to laugh so hard 
But you know, like when you can't laugh, but yeah. you have to. But it's a wedding. You can't. Oh yeah, really it's laugh. great. I just held it. I was like. <clears throat> <laughs> And then he starts fucking poking me, trying to get me to laugh at my friend's wedding. And that's just more and more. And then the guy keeps going, buk, 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 buk. <laughs> and then he starts cursing. And I'm just like looking down, trying to like tune everything else out. He's like, fuck shit, balls, cock. As they're like beautifully walking down the aisle. Wow. You know? <laughs> and I'm trying not to laugh. And then he starts going, Jews, Jews, <laughs> Jews. Oh, wow. Dude, I lost it. I couldn't hold it anymore. <laughs> I lost it. I was out. I had to leave the wedding. You got to warn people, man. I. Yeah, you do. We had a guy in here who beat it. He said he beat it. What do you mean beat it? He beat Tourette's. He had it, and then he shook it, literally, I guess. But yeah, he fucking didn't have it anymore. Really? Yeah. My brother-in-law has it. But Does he really? But like slight, he just goes, yeah, and then that's it. <laughs> oh, dude, that seemed like he has, an, he has an idea that didn't fully form. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Or like a sneeze that went away. Like, <laughs> Are there ideas that Jewish people get that uh, other people don't get? Like some like black people get sickle cell anemia. <clears throat> Diseases like some at Tay diseases, Tay Sachs disease, Tay Sachs. Yeah, you have to if you get married to a, a Jewish person gets married to another Jewish person, you get it tested because if you're both carriers, there's a one in four chance your di- your child will die horribly before the age of like twelve years old. Wow, like mangled and gross. So they're like, just don't get rid of it. Don't don't even don't even have don't even get married. Dang. Get rid of this relationship. If one's a carrier, one's not, then there's a one in four chance your kid will be a carrier, but that doesn't do anything. And then if you both have Tay Sachs. I mean, uh, yeah, taste sex, then you'll both be dead, so you won't get to that point. Damn. Yeah. That's crazy, bro. Yeah, taste sex is a Jew-only disease. Hmm. Yeah, you get all this intelligence, and everything else goes to shit. Damn. Do you think you could have survived the Holocaust or no? Uh, in America, I could have. <laughs> uh, no, I would have yeah. been killed for sure. Really? For sure. I don't think so, man. I think you're underestimating yourself, dude. I think you could have done it. Why? You just seem like, you know, people like you. You seem like, well, you're outspoken, though. So that might, you might have had to be kind of quiet I get at with night. I foot in my mouth. You'd have to be quiet. Do you guys even know that you're not even, like, killing people, like, the, in the best way? <laughs> you, you're, like, lining them up. You can, you know, if you line them up and get two at a time, you can save bullets, you idiot. Oh, my God. And they'd be like, fucking gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm too outspoken. I put my foot in my mouth so much. I think yeah. more than most comics. Well, I just can't help it but to be honest and, like, share my opinion. Yeah. And but it, that's great, though. I think that's what makes you a comedian that, you know, that people love, that people can rely on. They they know they can go to you to get exactly what you're thinking. Yeah. At wor- I'm not going to be dishonest. At worst, I'll be quiet. But I ain't going to, like, lie about something. Yeah. Did your dad ever get you, uh, give any pointers on how to survive the Holocaust or something like that? No. I wish he would have. He didn't teach me Hebrew or how to survive the Holocaust when that happens again. So I'm I'm, I'm really Damn, I'm really behind again. the eight ball a little bit on both those things. Should, uh, should Israeli take over or, or, <laughs> yeah. or the Germans take over? I'm really fucked. Do you think there's a state in America, if there was a state war, that's really going to have a really best shot of winning? I mean, ooh, that's a good question. Cali's got the Mexicans, but New York's got these Dominicans, and they're tough, bro. You gotta have water. They drop n bombs. Like weapons. It's nothing. Oh yeah. They drop n bombs and they're and they're not black. Oh yeah. It's that's crazy. Brave, bro. Yeah, but they don't even think they're not even trying to push the boundaries. They're just like this is how we talk. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I wonder who. I don't think it'd be like North Dakota or something like that. You need <laughs> the people. You need the people. Yeah. Yeah, I think it'd be New York. We have a lot of Jews, a lot of young Jews. So Florida's got a lot of Jews, but they're retired. They're done. I think New York. We got a lot of Jews who are smart, and we got a lot of grunts. So the Jews would lead the grunts. They'd, they'd be willing to accept what's the acceptable casualty rate. But it's American Jews. It's not Israelis. Because, I mean, Israelis, I feel like, are tougher oh, yeah, than American tougher. Jews. No, no. Jews would, like, run it, like... Like the books. And oh, shit. they would like organize sure it. Like how many people we got? To, They'd yeah, have the planning. Yeah, we wouldn't be doing the fighting. We'd be doing the planning. Exactly. Right. Exactly. We'd be officers straight to officer school. Yeah. I mean, I don't think it'd be. California has a lot of people and it's big. It's got the space. Alabama's a lot of black people. So does Georgia. Yeah, but they're like. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see them, <laughs> yeah, I don't really? see them getting together. They didn't do shit for slavery. That's true. They didn't get together. Well, if you go it. to Africa, they're not really. They have. They're not a lot of. There's not a lot Alabama of people on the same team. Yeah. You ever hear about Liberia? Mm-mm. You know the history of Liberia? It's after like slavery ended. You know, they're like a lot of blacks were like, let's go back to Africa. We're not wanted here. Wow. And so President Monroe was like, I'll ship you guys back if you want. I get it. We've been we fucked you guys up. If you want to go back there. And they're like, We weren't born there. We're we're six generations here, ten generations, whatever it is. And he's like, I get it. But so they went back and they found a Liberia. Liberia stands for liberated. Oh wow. Yeah, and their capital is Monrovia for President Monroe. Oh, that's and they crazy. Speak English. That's cool. Yeah, their their big tyrant was Charles Taylor, fucking normal American sounding name. Charles Taylor that played for enough the 49ers? 
Mm, I don't think it was him. I think it was a different one. Could have been. I got to look into it. Might have been the same Charles Taylor. Who is who, that? Charles who, Taylor. Who am I thinking of? Jamal Charles? No. Hmm. That's crazy. I, I should go there. It sounds like an interesting. Place. I want to go. My friend is from there, and so oh, he, no he escaped way. while the while the, the the war was going on. He went to the University of Maryland with me. Mm -hmm. um, but he was like, "War's over. We can go." Yeah. I saw a family there, and I was like, "Yeah, I want to go there. That sounds cool as fuck." I don't know anybody's been to Liberia. That's crazy. Except Jesse. I'd love to go. Yeah. Right. Dude, you're gonna have so much fun in goddamn Australia. Perth. Nobody goes to Perth on their first trip. That's yeah. great. I might go to Auckland as well. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> Why? Because now if I don't go, it's going to be really, people are going to be uncomfortable. Listen, here's the deal. No matter what, they'll like you better than Tom Segura, who's canceled two times on them. Why? People bought tickets, saved up money, bought tickets, and then he pretty much said, fuck you. He, I think he had to shoot a movie with Eliza Schlesinger. No. Eliza like and the Tig. the worst. Yeah. yeah, Eliza and Tig. He was like, I really want to work with those sounds two like people. like the worst month of my life. <laughs> yeah, and so instead of that, he, what was the movie he about? legit fans. What? What was the movie about, about forcing how to, things? How to be about angry about stuff you just, you just let go and move on past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> forcing things. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody said there was a, a lawsuit with Tig Notaro and Amy Schumer. Did you hear that? A lawsuit? What do you mean? I don't know. I just heard that. About who guts shot that cock? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And I shouldn't. I don't know that. A so lawsuit. No, I just I heard somebody heard talking about that the other day. I don't know what it was about. Um, they really like each other. Let's uh, let's get another couple of questions, man. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything else that I'd love to talk to you about. All right. I mean, the crazy thing is you let me come stay at your place one time. Oh, yeah. Which was really great in New York. And that's, that's when. It's not happening story. That's when I started getting sober, too, right then. It's the basis of that story you told. Yeah. Did that come out yet? Oh, uh, yeah. It came okay. out. And they had a, they have a, they had an AA meeting right down the street there from your place. Um, and you got sober there after that? Well, I would start going to. Yeah. I mean, there were times where there was no. I, I didn't feel like going far, and I would just go to the one down the street. And I lost all your house keys. I locked. My stuff out of your house three times, lost all the keys, had to hire a company to make him a new... New door lock, new, new keys. door lock, new keys. But I did it. Yeah, but the cool thing with that is now my landlord does not have my keys. So like we got to inspect. I'm like, well, I'm not going to be there. And they, they can't get in there. Oh, wow. I've never given my keys. Okay, you, you did that, did all the blow in New York yeah. while you were there, lost my keys... So you yeah. had to find a new way. I did, when, it, when I came home from, I was gone for a while, I think. Somewhere. Yeah, you were gone for a and while. And instead of just, you know, when you like land, like I just want to go home, like I couldn't. I had to stop by Michaela's house oh, yeah. and get my key and then go home and try oh. to coordinate with her. Even with all that, you were still one of the best house guests I've ever had. Really? Because Luis Gomez stayed there and, and it was all he could do not to steal the money I left out. Oh, he, was, yeah. he was bragging about what a good house guest he was. <laughs> you had $134. I didn't take any of it. I'm like, you're not supposed <laughs> to brag about that. Why'd you count my money? Because yeah. you were thinking of the whole time. Dave Smith said that. Stay there. I left him an eighth of weed. I was like, dude, you can smoke all this. Leave all the shit I brought from California. It's in Ziploc, like airtight packages. It was all down to like the nub. Uh -huh. Just like little pieces. He like opened up every one and just took a little bit at a time. Like I wouldn't notice. But I hadn't been home. So when from a full fucking ounce down to a fucking gram. Ugh. Yeah, both garbage, awful house guests. You, even with all that shit, you're second best to Nick Cody. Oh, thanks. He was good? He was good. He left it clean. But you gave me that, that uh, fucking... The soda maker. maker. Soda maker, yeah. And I think you did that because the, the Airstream is a, a Israeli-owned company that is apparently really? kills Palestinians or something. Do they really? No, but I remember they got mad at Princess Leia. You know the 2001 Princess Leia? What's mm -hmm. her name? She's Jewish, right? Carrie Fisher? No, no, no. The 2001 Princess Leia. Oh, who? Ebony? No, what? For sure her name was not Ebony. <laughs> I don't know anybody. I'm a huge Michael Landon fan. She was from Close. And he was Jewish. Michael Landon? Yeah. Wow. And he played a fucking Christian priest. A he, Christian angel. He was half and half, I think. Half and half's a great mix, don't you think? But she did a... She was from Closer also. Half and half is a good mix. She did a commercial for, for Soda Stream, and the, they said it was a... So all of a sudden they're like, why do you support murder of Palestinians? She was like, wait, what? I, I just wanted bubbles in water. I, what, do you, what do you guys put me on the record for? That's a problem with the left these days. They don't just put you on the thing you stand for. They put you on anything you're Everything, associated yes. with. You're friends with this guy. You associate with this. I'm like, associate? What are what you does talking that mean? about? What do yeah, I do? Did they just call out that guy, Chris Pratt. He went to church, right? So he goes to church. He has yeah. some faith. And they made fun of the church. That girl... Eddie, Eddie Page, not Eden Ellen. Page. Ellen Page ripped him up, you know? Because going to church. Yeah, she's like, well, that church, you know, hates LGBTQs, right? like, well, I don't. Right. So maybe I'll sway over the church and right. get him back to normal. Yeah, it's like, how do you expect anything to change if you aren't willing to see that people can be different, you know? That's what I understand. Like we're sometimes. not all part, some people just want a place to go. Yeah, what can you do? There's only a couple of options. There's only like six or seven religions. Yeah. Maybe it's close to his house. Maybe it's what he was raised in. And also if you go like associate with something terrible, that's like, well, you live in America and they've murdered 
a six-year-old Yemeni girl like yeah. a month ago. So like you associate with that? Or do you stand for that? Like, no, no, but I live here. But like would they put you on the record? Like, yeah, I guess you all do. Everybody here it's crazy. is responsible for the murder of a of a young woman. And what makes people do that? What makes people say what makes people do that, I wonder? Why do you It's 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 just fucking they want to win arguments without actually learning anything. They want to like act better than you. You know? That's what it is. I want to act better than you, so I'll put you in a place that's morally bereft, so I can be like, I'm not that. Yeah. Even though you're not that thing, so it's like, ugh. dude, I love this fucking scenery because it's right here, right like across, right where I'm standing, but mm -hmm. like over there is Mao's Chinese, one of the best Chinese oh, places so good. in Venice. Yeah. I've been there. It's one of the first Chinese places I ever went. Yeah. Let's hit up this Sos, fella. But you got a fucking, you got a fucking ask for it. It's on the menu. Mm. Hit it. Here's 2001. Uh, no, 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 not her? no, right. no. It's the chick from Close. What Ingvid? What? The, who the fuck was that? Who was it? Um, can you do some not real Gina Davis? She huh? was in Rogue One. Sorry, the girl I just pulled up. Was it Gina Davis? Rogue One's not two thousand one. Oh, my bad. That's Star Wars Episode One. Okay. What too? That we'll girl. Remember the girl? Uh, remember Rocky you know Dennis? It. What was that movie with Rocky Dennis in it? Oh yeah, The Mask. I love that movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different movie, but both movies for sure. You know her name. She Call out my name. <laughs> we'll, we'll fight it after the question. Look up closer. All right. Okay, go ahead. Hello, my lords. Uh, quick question. Have either of you He's guys ever right made now. a joke that you felt bad for making? And if so, what was it? Uh, shout out to the amazing racist. Gang, gang. There you go. <laughs> God loves you, man. Thank you for your question, brother. Um, Have I ever made a joke that that's what? That's a good what was, question. A, that a joke felt... that you made that you bailed out on. Bailed out, like stopped in the middle? You felt bad about. Oh, right. Natalie right. Portman. Yeah, but she wasn't Princess Leia, was she? What was she? All right, I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'd, I'm wrong. I'd, I'd blow up. <laughs> but Natalie Portman but, is, yeah, yeah, is, yeah. is the woman. Yeah. But. I'd blow a pair of ounces to her. That's for sure, bro. Yeah, I'd bust hot, out. One of the hot shoes. Um, yeah, there's stuff I felt like bad for. Like, I used to do a joke about like real fat people. Mm -hmm. You know how you had to like move your legs around each other instead of like straight up? You had to like get them around each other. Oh, yeah. And I would do it for a while. I was trying to be like, like that man, you had to like carry the one, almost like you were doing multiplication. Yeah, there you go. Get the fuckers. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Yeah. Um, but then I remember seeing like an obese woman in the audience and be like, oh, I don't want to make you feel bad. I was kind of trying to laugh at someone's expense who wasn't here. Yeah. Now that you're here, I kind of felt bad about it. But like, I'm not sorry I did it. That's how I learned to become the comic where I can like find the line that I have. Right. You got to go over it. You know, when they taught Andre Agassi how to serve, they taught him how to hit as hard as he could. And then they taught him how to aim. If they stopped him, we're like, well, that ball went out. That's no good. Yeah. And he wouldn't have hit hard. It's actually a really good point. Yeah, it's like you start to know what your line is, and everybody's line is going to be different for their level of comfort for your and own, who they your are. Own moral compass. And people know? are going to start to know that over time, and they expect to go there and see someone who's mastered mm -hmm. exactly what they're doing. And it changes while you change and what, what you get into, you know? So it's like, yeah, there's there's been jokes I've been upset at. Like, I've been like, nah. But not that many. Mostly I'm fine with it. Yeah. You know, it's not about like who's offended, but it's about like what I feel. How about you? Yeah, I think I'm trying to think of any one that really. Uh, or if I don't believe in the premise of the joke, yeah. that's that I'm hurt. That hurts more. Not if I'm offending anybody, but if I'm like, if I say something I'm like I'm not into. Like if I make a, a a wage gap joke when I don't really believe the wage gap is what they're making it out to be. Oh yeah. Then I'm like, no one would be offended by this, but I don't think that's true. And I could reward. I could have rewarded it to make it still work. I saw Willie Barsana do that once. We did a joke about being poor, but he was like a hero in the Latino world where I where I saw him at, and he was he just made it. When I used to be poor. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, now it's honest. Mm. Instead of pretending like you're still poor. Poor now. You're not. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I I'm trying to think if there's any specific. I'm sure I tried a couple that did not get some laughs for sure. And that made me think, okay, this is too much. Oh, well, there's that too. I, I mean, I don't like not getting laughs. So, but I'm not sorry I do it. It's just like, I didn't know how to do it right. Yeah. You know? I think in the beginning, I used to definitely say stuff that was more like low common denominator mm -hmm. and like. Shock for the sake of shock. Yeah, shock. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't have any real desire. I didn't even know what I was doing, really. I was just trying to stay safe up there. Uh huh. You know, and stay okay. Yeah, but that to me, that's the worst thing now, is staying safe. It's yeah. So boring. I want to get more edgy now. I think even just listening to conversations like this and thinking about it, like, you know, and hearing, like, you know, this is a good time for comedy and, like, you can make them laugh at something they don't want to laugh at. That's yeah. to me is like, yeah, man. That's that yeah. trickery. That's that beautiful trickery. And here's a here's a white right here with a question. That's not a white. Yo, Ari, Theo, what's happening, man? I mean, Christian calling in from Port Douglas, Australia. Oh, My sure question for Ari was: it looks like it's a Maori. Could you please elaborate on that salvia trip you had back in the day, back with the old red band? Um, I believe you said it felt like you were living underwater 
for four months to two years. Here's if you could uh, elaborate on that, that'd be pretty, pretty cool because that sounds pretty interesting. And here's a problem. This guy asked um, a question. I, I, I did elaborate on it. That's <clears throat> why he's getting that. I went into it for like five full minutes. And yeah. he's getting that. And he's pretty much asking a question like, I want to hear you talk. That's a dumb question, bro. We got another. <laughs> we just want to move on. Or do you want to get into it? I mean, I took a heavy salvia truck. It's been a long time. How much but... is that? Like a couple ounces? No, or so what? we took a bong. What does it come in? A little pouch? A pouch? Pouch. You can get them at Circus of Books down on uh, Santa Monica. Can you really? Santa Mon- yeah, it wasn't illegal. I, they might have made it illegal since then, but it was one of those like, under the radar drugs. And you process it 20 times, 40 times, 60 times, even 80 times. And the more process it was, the higher the higher potency it was. And Red Band was into it. And, no um, shit. I think I had done it once before. And it makes you like lose your balance. Mm-hmm. Start seeing stuff from like childhood and the color yellow a lot. Oh, yeah. Anyway, so we were doing it on a podcast. <laughs> and I took a big hit out of, a, out of a bong. But I wasn't used to like smoking. Like a lot of people go like, you know, when you see a bong, they go... Clear it all. Then I cough. I, I can do half a bong hit. And then I got to do the rest of the bong hit. Just with weed. So I did as much as I could. And I was like, start coughing. But they were like, that wasn't a full fucking hit. But it got me to where I was like, uh, like right on the line. He was shook, huh? So I was already like, got a head start on it. I was like, fuck. And they're like, do a real hit. And I was like, ah, I was like about to trip out. And then I did this massive hit, which would have been plenty the first time. But I did that in conjunction with the other hit. And you went deep, huh? I was gone. Oh, yeah. Fucking I mean, I was not there anymore. Fucking couple of orf- orphans driving your brain. Yeah. I guess I was laying there. I don't know how long, but like, so then I started living in this like underwater, in this lake behind my childhood home. I was just Damn. there. I had a life. I had friends. I had a job. I had this woman I had a relationship with. Oh, wow. And it was like, it went on. And so I said, I, 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 I don't remember exactly but it's i would say somewhere between six months and two years mm. i was down there you know and you were living doing life. good huh? my sports teams were doing well all underwater you know in this underwater land we're all like seahorses and shit Damn. and then one day you know breathing water fine one day i'm swimming up around and i just see right out of the water right at the edge of the water probably the closest we're sitting right now that's where i was just gacked out and i say the edge of the water a dude a human dude oh I was yeah like, what and it was sam tripoli wow and I just swam up to him. I could see him being somewhere I like there. Yeah, I mean, he was there in the room with me. So, but that's why I was like starting to come back eight, nine, ten minutes later. And I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And then I like kind of popped up, and it was Sam. But I wasn't all the way back yet. And they gave me some water, and I was, and I just had to spit it up because I was like, "No, you breathe water. You don't drink mm, water." That's and, amniotic, bro. You got all amniotic. Yeah, and then it was like another fifteen minutes till I was like back again, and it was like, "Fuck!" I was like, "Wait, I'm not here." It's kind of like Inception, you know? Oh yeah. And you're back, and you're like, "Wait, no, no, oh." Oh yeah, oh yeah. This is this is life. Yeah, but I thought I had a new life. I thought you was out there. That was a good. That was a good trip. It looked shitty. It looked like if you see the video of it, because Redman taped it, it mm-hmm. looked pretty awful. But it wasn't awful, man. The it was McRib, great. baby. The McRib is back, son. That's what it sounds like. That was a good. T- I gotta do that again. It's a dirty drug, though. Is it? Yeah. It it's sounds like, dirty. You know how sound dirty drug? Coke is a dirty drug. Yeah. Mushrooms and and acid are not dirty. You know, um, MDMA's. I don't know. What about that DMT? Have you done it? I did it once. I didn't quite get there. You done it? Never done it. I'm gonna do it again. I did it. I was in my backyard. I, you know, I have that backyard. Oh yeah, I've been out there smoking cigarettes before. Yeah, it's great. It's the best part of my apartment. Yeah, it's nice, dude. I so a couple times when I got locked out, I had to go over to that garden that's a couple buildings down. I had to jump the fence into that garden, I, go through the garden, and then jump through the back areas of the other between that building between you and that garden area yeah. to get to. Did you luckily left the door unlocked? Yes. Wow. Because it seems fine to leave it unlocked. It's all fence. Like who would go there? The fucking rich people next door? No. no. I had to do that though that three times. Unlocked. I was crazy. Wow. Middle of the night, fucking three a.m. Yeah, I would be so through. nervous. Somebody would be like, "What the fuck are you doing? Call the cops." I was so nervous, dude. Jumped it. Wow, that's great. Just yeah, I fucking could not hold on to those keys, man. Yeah. So I was lying there next to this girl. We smoked some DMT. Mm-hmm. She was gone. I was like going, and then I was laying there in that tree. Mm-hmm. I saw this uh, this caterpillar. Oh yeah. This hexagon like 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 things made up of a caterpillar come down to the tree, and I was just looking at it. And he looked at me for a while, and I looked back at him, and then he just goes, no, and then just like caterpillars back up the tree. And I was like, and then I was out of it, and I was like, what? He and I looked you. at the girl, and she was like, I just died and came back, did you? And I was like, no, I don't think I got invited. And she's like, oh, you missed out. Wow. Yeah, he said no, wasn't ready, I guess. Wow. Yeah, I got to do it again. I have some. So Mother Nature came looking for you, and they weren't ready for I you. I have some. You know, in fact, maybe... Maybe in uh, 
in Phoenix or or in uh, I'm in Phoenix and Tempe and Miami and West Palm. Maybe maybe a definitely in Phoenix. Maybe but maybe a fan will give me some and I can do some with Adrian. Smoke some fucking DMT. Who's Adrian? Your lady? No, Adrian Appalucci opens for me sometimes. She's a real dark comic from New York. Oh yeah, yeah I met her before. Yeah, and uh, I got her high in Austin. She's cool chick. She is cool, but she doesn't get high much. And she started being convinced that I was going to kill her, and that's oh, why I yeah. invited her out there. And she couldn't get it out of her head. And I saw it instantly, and I'm like, Oh, I already have been through this with other friends. There's no way I can convince you because, of course, I would try You're to the convince killer. you. Yeah. So every time I was like, oh, I took the wrong way. So like, why did you take the wrong way? Where are we going? I'm like, Adrian, I could have killed you anywhere. Yeah. I don't need to go I the wrong way. I waste all this gas money to I kill you. I could do it at the, at the house. Well, that's like Shane Moss was on here. He ate a bunch of drugs, right? He went, you know, he got all buzz all day. Shane Moss goes for it. Yeah, dude. And he, uh, and he hired a film crew to make a documentary. And then he thought the film crew was stealing his life and like secrets. Wow. So he started giving clues to the camera that he would then watch later down the road so that he would be able to know what was really going wow. on. Wow. And then he went to the hospital. <laughs> wow. Yeah, did, what, he did mushrooms every day for a month or DMT He every tried day to do month? mushrooms every day for a month, but then right when he started, he apparently, somebody invited him to do some DMT and he agreed to do it and it was just too much at once. He so, coated himself with the shit that wouldn't let it come out of his pores. Yeah. Something root. And so uh, then it just like kept circling around in his body. He got and, caught up. Well, that's the dark art. Dude, I saw him a month or two later mm -hmm. at Pink Floyd, at Roger Waters concert in, in, in like, yeah, he invited me and my lady and it was, it was great. It was a great concert. But he was like, he hadn't taken anything for a while, but the way he was talking was like that, that you know, that 30 minutes to an hour after you come out of your mushroom trip and you're mm -hmm. still kind of half there and half there. He was talking like that all the time. Oh, yeah. He's still there a little bit. He's still a bit of a loose stool, if you ask me. <laughs> What else do we have here for Mr. Ari? I did that. I got some DMT once. Mm -hmm. uh, not DMT, sorry. MDMA once and uh, from one of the store dealers at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember like I hadn't taken it. I was like, or it's ecstasy. That's what it was, which is like has it in there. And I was like uh, in a Vegas casino with Eddie Bravo and Rogan and shit. Wow. I'm starting to feel like, oh shit, it might have been taken too much. I might OD. And I remember texting myself. I got these drugs from Sandy Danto. So if somebody, if I died, <laughs> yeah. if somebody found my thing, they were like, they would he put him in jail it. for what he did to me. Oh, that's a classic, dude. <laughs> yeah. As he well should. <laughs> Who would win in a fight between you and uh, Burt Kreischer, do you think? Uh, it depends if I was smart about it. If I ran around a little bit and tired him out from his mm -hmm. fat, um, then he would, I would win because he would just fall over. Yeah. Actually, no, he's, he's, listen, I make fun of him a lot, but I've consistently underestimated his athletic ability. I gotta believe he. If he grabs me, it's over. It's over. Yeah. I can make him laugh, maybe. What if you tickled him? I feel like you could. Yeah, that's him. the way. I think that's something like that. I think something like that. He wouldn't expect it, or plead like, "Oh man, no, I have a girlfriend and everything's going better for me. Please, please." Yeah. And then he like let go, and then I gouge. Yeah. I I'd be dirtier than him. Or if you asked him how many girls he slept with, and he said six, you know, because he, he always, really says always says, "Yeah, he always says six. Yeah. But it'd be a good fight, though. Yeah. It'd be tough. What? I have some jujitsu training a little bit, Eddie Bravo white belt, but I don't know how much it would do against that weight. Our user, we had a vote on it. A lot of our users voted for you. I'm really? He's you 258 win. pounds though. But right, 258 pounds of what? Of flap. Dude, that stomach goes out. It's yeah. like more than a pregnant belly. It just it didn't there's no there's no like jiggle oh. to it. It's just pushed out it's like a it's seventh as big trimester, as baby. Let's get this one last question here for Ari Shafir. Who yeah, who yeah, is I, this here, Nicholas? Uh Andy Phelps. Okay. My name's Andy from Salt Lake City. Uh, my question would be, Ari. Love Salt Lake. If you weren't doing stand-up comedy and if you had to work a blue-collar type of job, what do you think it would be? <laughs> I would never work a blue-collar job. <laughs> what are you talking about? I mean, if I wasn't me at all, you're saying like, what kind of blue-collar jobs are good for blue-collar people? Yeah. I'd be a lawyer, first of all, if I wasn't a comic. But what's a blue-collar job you would be? Something with your hands. Fuck. Like what, a juggler? No. <laughs> I think I don't think that's what blue collar job is. Oh yeah, maybe. Uh, I guess what like else? Working the your post hands? office, maybe playing bow and arrow. I don't think that's what the post uh, office. Yeah, I think that's more what they mean like that. A blue collar job. Yeah, shoveler. No, nah, I wouldn't do anything like that. I think I'd be like foreman at a. I mean, let's assume I still who I am, so I'm pretty intelligent. Yeah, I think foreman at a construction site, blue collar job, something like that. Yeah, maybe I maybe I own a. a, a like in Long Island, I'd own like a contractor, like a contracting company. Yeah. 
What do you think about Long Island? They 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 had that Amazon going there, and they're out they're out now. Well, that's Long Island, so it's pretty much Greater New York. But actual Long Island is garbage. Is it? It's for garbage people. I'm trying to come up with a term. A lot of hotties over there, though, huh? Mostly not. Really? Oh yeah. Long I think Island's I saw a picture of a hot people. chick there once. Yeah, this a couple come out of there. A lot of twinks over there too. Bert Kreischer actually won this. Fifty three to forty seven was the percentage of votes. I mean, I would vote for Bert also. <laughs> In your own fight against him? Yeah. But that, I see you being a, that's calculated. Oh, I'm definitely going to be smarter about it. I'm going to like, you're going to vote for rope him, rope him. All, Anything I can to fight. Poison him. him? Dude, when we did that weight loss challenge or that fitness challenge, they were like, oh, Ari hasn't worked out for three days and we're, we're beating him, we're lapping him. And then Rogan's like, dude, are you not going online with your device so you can like put a bunch of stuff on at once and, and have us not work out because we think we're ahead of you? And I'm like, fucking of course idiot yeah what'd you think i just wasn't working out letting you win yeah <laughs> obviously i'm fucking sandbagging did you win dumb shit yeah the only person who beat me was disqualified for steroid use wow joe rogan <laughs> yeah i think that's who it was yeah um but yeah i was the i was the non barry bonds winner of sober october for sure wow i love that man yeah that's pretty cool um what was that last question that was it blue collar job oh yeah what would you do if i had a blue collar job i work on a farm Farm, that'd be pretty good. No, you know what? I think I would do that. I think I would, I, I prepare, oh, I'd have a company preparing people for the for the zombie apocalypse. Ooh, I like that. Zombie prep with Ari Shafir. Yeah. Damn, that actually Damn, sounds like an amazing web, summer web, camp. Web series. <laughs> summer camp. Like, summer camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it, yeah, is there something a lot of Jewish people don't like to do blue collar jobs, but you worked in a graveyard. At 16. Right. To, for a lark. Feel my hands, man. That's someone who has not oh. worked hard his whole <laughs> I life. I was going to say, I feel the soft. death in him. Oh, <laughs> um, but so what is that? It's just like a, it's just like a thing, like a. Ew. Yeah, it's not for no, us. Thanks. It's like not. to be the organizers. Yeah, it's for it's for fucking cogs, man. Jews are too smart for that. I, listen, guys, I know I get I get how this will get taken. We're we're smart. I don't know what to tell you, man. I, I don't know what to tell you. In a few generations, you can get there if you work hard, but you won't work hard. You're gonna ban your families and fucking what? do a bunch Damn. of blows and do shit like that. But Damn, so dude. good luck staying there. Oh, Koreans, man. I'm right with you. Or if you see, would you call Chinese people are sort of the real black people? You say that's fair. I'm not going to say you're wrong. In what way? Let's break this down a little bit. Because Chinese people, man, they love to barbecue real as fuck, bro. Real as fuck. They Rims on it. everything. Really? Fucking down the fuck. China Chilin. is like China. They are the closest to their immigrant status. But they're real as hell, bro, if you get some real-ass Chinese people. Black guys now, dude, I have a black friend the other day. He told me he's dizzy. He's feeling dizzy. Oh, Chinese guy would never do that. Yeah, they're busy like, fucking hoarding their the money. What the fuck, dude? They're busy hoarding their money and getting on first before you get out of an elevator. Yeah. Yeah, dude, yeah. <laughs> they love, but I'm saying they're pastime. real. I'm getting out. Like, well, I'm getting on and I'm first. I feel like Chinese people are the new black people. Ooh. I think Jews were the old black people. We were the original, the ONs. The OBs? Yeah. Oh, ONs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, we were the lowest class. We were the worst. We were all. We, we were the boxers. We were all the fucking N-word jobs. You know. We, really? We, 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 there was a whole basketball team, the Syracuse Jews. That was a basketball team back then. We ran it, and then we fucking lifted ourselves up. Luckily, we didn't have to overcome slavery, so we're a little ahead of you guys. But, you know, in 300 years, black people, you'll be right where we are, and we'll both together be shitting on Mexicans. Really? Yeah. Dude, but Mexicans are going to be pissed. Yeah, they'll be pissed, but they'll be fucking mm, siesta. You know, <laughs> no, it a problem, bro. They only sleep because they've you been said it before working we got on. all You're day. You're the one who said they're awful. <laughs> no, I did never say that. Before we got on. We were talking to Shab and, 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 and Carlin. Yeah. And then you said, you, we were talking about like, you know, gender bias and shit like that. And you out of the blue, it's okay. Yeah. I, it's not like, I, I mean, I do disagree with you, but like, no. I get it when you're like the lowest of the low. I understand what you're saying, but like, no, that's the thing about free speech. You you have the right to say that, and yeah. I'll defend that to the end. But I mean, if I was a Mexican, I would stab you. But I don't. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, that's, I'm not. I'm not Mexican, so I can't tell you how to do your business. You can stab me or Ari Shafir. Uh, where are you playing soon, Ari? I'll be in. Uh, Toronto's almost sold out, but I'll be in West Palm and, and Miami. I'll be in uh, Tempe and uh, Tempe and Phoenix. In both of those in March, and then uh, and then I don't know Cleveland and Columbus and shit like that. Wow, it's a lot of the same places I'm going in. Have Probably. Been. Do we, are you with Justin? Um, I'm with CAA. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we probably have the same like people running the shows. Yeah. So go to AriTheGreat.com for tickets. Got a podcast, Skeptic Tank. Yeah. I got to come on again sometime. Yeah, I know. We got a great one about hiking after you got back from Kilimanjaro. Yeah, that was crazy, man. It's it been fun. a couple of years. I, I have to come on again. Yeah, it's we been a long time. Yeah. I'd love to do that. That was one of the most unique podcasts I've done just because it's different. 
Yeah. Kevin Nealon has a hike in one I'm going to go do. He has. It's all about hiking. Yeah, I think it's, it's just mine is a different around. topic every time. So on the topic of hiking, like let's oh, hike while we do this. That's a good idea. Yeah, I have to find something else that I'm doing that we that we. Yeah, can maybe we're going to get back from Australia or something. Or I don't know. Oh yeah, some experience like you just finished. Because then I could talk to you. Yeah, I could get your take on it. Yeah, maybe we'll talk about relapse after you get back from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> I'm scared to do bad coke, bro. That's my middle name. Yeah, Theo Bad Coke. Wrong. But I'll tell you what: if you do relapse and and you don't want to admit to everybody that you do, we can record the podcast and I'll hold it until you come out and tell everybody you relapse, <laughs> and then I'll release it. <laughs> you have my word on that. <laughs> He's an honorable man. Yeah. You always get it straight from him. Uh, Ari Shapir, thanks for coming, man. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, good to see you, bro. Yeah. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this peace of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time for me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine.